Hey, great friends. Welcome to the show. It is Thursday afternoon. Happy to have everybody along from the Seven Mile Casino Studios. In fact, Seven Mile Casino sent me an email yesterday. You know, they're already known for their great table games and their amazing location just a few minutes from downtown San Diego. But now it's actually gotten better because the restaurant inside is now Sammy's Restaurant and Bar. You know, the Sammy's that people have known in, in San Diego for years. Uh, I love Sammy's because there's one in Del Mar that I've been going to forever. Uh, Where there, I worked. You worked. I didn't know you worked at Sammy's. Yeah, that was the restaurant that I worked at before I went full time. Yeah. I didn't know that. Well, now I know the whole menu. Okay. Well, hey, now there's a Sammy's in the Seven Mile Casino, and it's uh, and it's it's amazing, and it's open twenty four seven. So um, listen, on weekends, how about this? They've got a brunch nine a.m. to three p.m. Saturdays and Sundays. So um, are you familiar with the short rib Benny with the freshly poached eggs and the Ooh. choco chocolate chip pancakes stacked high. Are you familiar with all of this? Oh, that's new. That's brunch. That's new. Yeah. And they've got their great pizzas, as you know. So uh, Sammy's is now available inside Seven Mile Casino, located just off the five and Bay Boulevard in Chula Vista. Sammy's Restaurant and Bar at Seven Mile Casino, just minutes from downtown. So happy to have uh, Sammy's in Seven Mile Casino. I'm going to take just a minute here and talk to you about I Thrive MD. People have been asking me, hey, what happened to your other sponsor, Total T? And I'm like, listen, we've upgraded. We have upgraded to a completely different level. Um, I am friends with the doctor who runs I Thrive MD. We have spent the last six weeks, I've been taking treatments, I've been visiting with the, the clinic, I've been learning a lot more about testosterone than I ever knew. One in three guys over the age of 40 suffers from low testosterone, and that could mean depression, it could mean low sex drive, it could mean erectile dysfunction. And I'm just here to tell you that I Thrive MD can help. Alex, show everybody if you go to our website, kaplanandcrew.com, go to our website, click on the I Thrive MD logo. Here it is, it's coming up. You go from here and then you go directly to this landing page, which is called ithrivemd.com slash Kaplan. And then if you click on Scott Kaplan offer right there, Okay, you see this right here? This is a special offer for you, the great friends. This is what you get. So you're going to get a free testosterone test. You're going to get a free TRT consultation. And then you're even going to get a $200 value of NAD injections and HCG peptides. And the doctors will tell you more about what this stuff is. It's just really all about keeping yourself young and fit, sleeping well, um, doing right in the bedroom, if you will. This is San Diego's leading aging and performance optimization clinic, iThriveMD, iThriveMD slash Kaplan. Okay, another couple of quickies. BetUS, BetUS.com. I'm just telling you this. You can call this number, 1-800-79-BETUS, and they can walk you through how to set up an account, but I was able to do it online. If I can do it, believe me, you can do it. When you give the promo code 1090, you're gonna get a 200% bonus on your first deposit. I put 100 bucks in my account, I'm wagering on preseason NFL football games just to start getting my game going. If I can do it, you can do it. And if you love betting on football, BetUS is the place to go 25 years. And these are the guys that will actually pay you out. You know, you got to have a, a sports book with integrity. These are the guys that actually pay you out. BetUS, BetUS.com. Use the promo code 1090, and it's a 200% bonus. And lastly, as always, much love to our people from Corky's Pest Control, 1-800-901-1102. Cork can take such good care of you, your house, get rid of the bugs, the rodents, whatever your problems may be, and Tory Holistics. What can I say about Tory Holistics? I can say that you can save 20% when you use our promo code GRANDE. It's coming to the end of August, so we're going to change the promo code. Grande saves you 20% on all your favorite products, whether it's CBD for pain, whether it's a, an Indica product for sleep, if it's Sativa for recreation, whatever your uh, choice is, Tori Holistics, and use our promo code Grande. All right, let's start the show, man. Hey, great friends, what is happening on a Thursday afternoon here on Kaplan and Crew from the Seven Mile Casino Studios, broadcasting on the radio airwaves of the Mightier 1090 on the stream of YouTube and tonight on television, Channel 4 San Diego, Channel 4 Santa Barbara. It's all part of the Cox Your View Network. If you're in Orange County or Palos Verdes, it's Channel 118, and you can always get us on all the audio podcast platforms. Let me just start off by saying this. I don't think I've ever been up till one o'clock in the morning watching any major league baseball game, seriously. And I was at that game last night and uh, I got a lot of things that I want to talk about, about what happened at the actual game at Petco park. But I was at that game and I would say around the 11th or 12th inning, 
I looked at my daughter, who, by the way, I didn't know she was going to be at the game. She texted me. She's like, look, I'm at the game. I'm like, yeah, me too. We're like not too far from each other. Let's hang out. So that was like awesome. Um, and I looked over at my buddy, Craig Dato, who everybody knows from the Del Mar racetrack. And I said to Craig, I go, what do you want to do, man? And he said, I'm kind of ready to roll. And I'm like, yeah, it's like we got here at 745, got there a little bit late. And then we uh, we were like, OK, you know what? It's it's 11 o'clock at night. Let's roll. So we left the game, drove north, stopped at the in and out and PB, because by the way, Alex, you always say to me, I always try and healthy things up. You know, I get it protein style or I don't get all the stuff all over it. It was 11 o'clock at night. I'm like, it doesn't matter. Whatever it is that I'm eating is bad right now. So I might as well go all in. And I did animal style. Only one double double. I was proud of myself. I'm on a little bit of a diet. You know, I only had one. You Congratulations. Know, thank you. Uh, but literally listened um, on the radio to Charlie Steiner and the Dodgers radio broadcast. So from Petco Park, downtown San Diego, to PB, to the in and out where I must have waited in line 20 minutes at least. Back up north, dropped my boy Dato off in Del Mar, drove home to Solana Beach. And I'm not joking with you when I tell you I probably caught the last three innings on television. That is how long this freaking ball game went last night to the point where, like, while you're at the game, I don't know how it is for everybody else. I don't really know what's going on at the game when I'm at the game. When I'm at the game, I'm socializing, I'm talking to people, I'm high-fiving people, I'm chatting it up. I happened to be out last night in the Templeton Whiskey Suite area out in right center field. By the way, where Tatis hit that home run. If I was still there, if I had the commitment to the game, if I were still there, I'm telling you right now, I'd have been sitting right there and caught that home run ball. Nope. When I say caught it, when it bounced over the fence, it would have come right to me. That's exactly where I was sitting. But I was there last night, and there were all kinds of former NFL players and former baseball players. Uh, I saw Ed White last night. I saw uh, Rolf Benershka and had a great time with Rolf last night. Uh, Brad DeLuiso, the former kicker of the Giants. Andy Ashby, former Padres pitcher. Donnie Edwards rocking all of his Charger gear, which was a little weird to me. Um, lots and lots of former Charger players, former Padre players. And uh, I'll tell you who I saw last night who was great to see was Nick Hundley. What a great guy. I love, I've always loved Nick Hundley. Former Padre catcher was there. So I was in this party area with all these dudes having a great time. And I was kind of barely watching the game till later in the game. And then I'm telling you, I got more concentration on this game when I got home after 20 minutes at a line and in and out. So what a night, crazy night, a um, lot of fights, very aggressive crowd, and really ultimately a very, what I would call demoralizing defeat for the Padres because you're in the game and it's going extras, and you got this incredible pitching performance from Blake Snell. We've never seen Blake Snell go that far. We've never seen him throw that many pitches. And then to ultimately lose the game at home, which, by the way, was in front of a lot of Dodger fans, very demoralizing loss. And even if you win today and you, you salvage one win, you competed, you showed a lot of heart, but um, I, I'm telling you, and I said it before, if they get swept in this series – I think this season is over. And I'll tell you one thing right now. Uh, you talk about a guy getting outmanaged. Dave Roberts last night looked like a World Series manager. Jace Tingler looked like a double-A manager. And I'll just say one other thing. You know who looks bored out of his freaking mind? Because I was sitting right there. Is Fernando Tatis. Out in right field, he looks bored. He was actually more interested in watching the fights in the stands than seeing what was going on in the game. So, all right, I'm rambling. I'm just getting rolling. Ah, let me catch my breath. Here he is, mi hermano numero uno, grande Alejandro Padilla. He's repping the 805. <clears throat> Oxnard, California in the house. Ventura County in La Casa. Grande, I know you were at the game, but you were texting me. Your lady tapped out. She was done. She was ready to leave. Hola. Yeah. Como esta, amigo? Tapped out after 12. The dog was by herself at home, and the lady was like, we got to go, and I did not fight it one bit, man. My bedtime's 1030. Uh, so when you got me out outside the house at whatever time that was 11 something, and we parked all the way in Horn Plaza and I had to walk all the way over there. Yeah. I, I was cool with going and they stopped selling beer. Yeah. I'm good to go. I'm tapped out at myself. Um, listen, I'm not going to stick around and watch the Padres get no hit for 10 innings. You know, maybe if it was like an exciting extra inning game, that was the most boring 16 inning game of all time. Like there was no action whatsoever except Jace Tingler making mistakes. So I would like to start my first thought of my first thought today is congratulations to John Browner because today is officially Jace, fire Jace Tingler day on Twitter. 
So now you have a mob with you, John Browner. And I will explain to you why yesterday switches everything about Jay Singler and why it won't matter because AJ Preller has already committed to him. But anyways, um, I feel hungover. <laughs> I really do. I drank uh, three beers at the game last night and I feel hungover. So I'm thankful that tonight's game is not a day game. Can you imagine them playing at one o'clock oh earlier today? God. So, um, yeah, I got lots of thoughts about the game. My mind is there. And I think, Scott, I was kind of agreeing with you about the demoralizing aspect of it all. Um, I just like I just don't see it as that way for some reason. I think it is, it, if anything, it kind of elevated the pitchers yesterday because the pitchers had such a great performance that I think that was needed. But we'll get into all yeah, of it. Yeah, I mean, but so. you know, you, you look at Fernando Tatis, you know, he's 0 for 6 with four strikeouts before he hits that home run. Yeah. 0 for 6. And, you know, we all try and analyze people's body language. You know, like we all are, are some kind of scientist when it comes to this. Like, oh, well, look at his shoulders. And that clearly tells you what he's thinking. I mean, it just – there just wasn't this spark, this energy. Um, I give the pitching staff a ton of credit. I really do. But Dave Roberts – kept walking intentionally walking guys didn't even pitch to him just to keep getting to the pitchers and it, it just seemed like tingler and again i was there watching then i left i was listening on radio i was watching on tv so you know if i told you that i was completely zoned in on it i'd be i'd be misleading uh, misleading you in some ways but it, it just it just seemed like dave roberts had a much better game plan you know he had one yeah a plan how about that yeah we'll call it a plan yeah yeah. Yeah. I mean, listen, dude, when you got when you got the 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 chosen one, Kevin Acey, criticizing the manager in the newspaper, you know you messed up. Mm. And then there's no there's no ways around it, man. That dude had I even told my fiance, uh, she had no idea what was going on. She was asking me a ton of questions, so I was actually pretty engaged in the game itself. And I was like, Whoa. She's like, Well, I was like, he's bringing Blake Snell back out. Like, he's already at 110 pitches. What the hell is he doing? Like Blake Snell only goes five. He yeah. doesn't go eight. Mm -hmm. That was number one. And if you want to get all baseball later with that double switch and the and taking Will Myers out, putting in Marisnik, and then Marisnik not hitting, pinch running for Nola, putting Kim in, and then not doing the double switch to take freight, it was a disaster. Disaster. Well, listen, this is uh, AJ Preller's chosen manager. He wanted somebody young, inexpensive, and controllable. If you go out and hire somebody experienced, relatively expensive. Uh, with a track record of success, that guy, imagine Bruce Bochy, tells A.J. Preller, don't tell me what to do. Don't tell me who to play. I know what I'm doing. See these three rings right here? You, you got those? Because I got these. And so that's what happens when you, when you hire puppets. This is what you get. You get guys that are in way over their head, and they're outclassed. And that is who Jace Tingler has always been. And it's no knock on him today. It's been the same way the entire time. AJ Preller should put on a uniform and get down into the dugout and manage the freaking team himself if he knows so much about baseball. So anyway, all right, ladies and gentlemen, here he is, six foot seven inches tall, twisted steel, sex appeal, big sacks, big max, the hot take machine, and a man known internationally to the ladies as the Brown Song. His brother bringing the street cred from the Seven Mile Casino Podcast Shed. Here he is, South Side. South side of Chicago's own <laughs> <laughs> Big Brown, JB, John Browner, the Brown Man in the house. Brown. You know, I I love to say I told you so. It's kind of my brand. It's kind of my thing. I said print up some shirts. This was a long time coming. This was eventually gonna happen and everybody else would see the light. He was playing checkers last night, and Dave Roberts was playing chess. I mean, I don't I, – I, was Larry Rothschild really helping him that much managing the team that now that guy's gone? Blake Snell seems to be great again, no pun intended. And now, I mean, this guy doesn't know what a double switch is. He doesn't know – oh, he, he couldn't clearly see what was happening. Now, to be perfectly frank with you, I'm not some baseball super-duper-duper duper maker insider. So I was like, Dave Roberts is doing something. So I went and looked up what he was doing, and I figured out what to do. So I don't know why he couldn't. He's getting paid. So I mean, I can tell y'all Chase Tingler is the is Who? the uh, 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 hit list, but y'all already know. Y'all knew before we, before that game ended. People were saying to me, so they knew. 
We share a common bond. I told y'all he was bad. I told y'all he wasn't he wasn't a manager for this team. I told y'all most of their struggles was because of this man. And now here we are. Welcome. Welcome. The water's nice. Don't pee in it. <laughs> okay. There you go. You know how uh there's non-fungible tokens mm-hmm. now, the NFTs. Mm-hmm. I think yesterday was a totally visible situation for for totally f- tangible situation. It was fungible. For- it was it was incredibly visual. Mm-hmm. You could feel it. You could see it. You could touch it. All the mistakes were on display last night. Mm-hmm. It wasn't a digital code. It wasn't a URL. <laughs> it wasn't a piece of art. <laughs> this thing was right in front of you, and you could tell he got outplayed, outmatched by a guy that didn't even do anything. Like right. if you want to say Dave Rivers playing chess? No, he was just waiting you for you to mess up. Like, that's not playing chess. He just took it, advantage it, of your dumbass moves. It is when it is when your opponent's a dummy. It is when your opponent don't know what to do. Yeah, he looked like he playing three D chess against this yeah. clown. Ran circles around that man and ran when, circles around him sitting down. There was two Padre fans in front of me who were great people. Had plenty of high fives with them. And interesting when that you're Blake's, touching other people. Interesting that you're actually touching other human beings. Wow. <clears throat> yeah. When Blake wow. Snell came into for the eighth inning, mm-hmm. they cheered. And I looked at my fiance and I was like, this is not the right move. And they looked at me like, this fool doesn't know. I'm like, and then when Will Smith hit that home run, I was like, no high five for you, bro. (laughs) I told you. (laughs) I told you. Like, this was a mistake. That was numero uno. Blake Snell's at 110 pitches, right? Blake Snell don't throw 110 pitches. No one on the Padres staff throws 110 pitches. And I don't know. He went all in. To me, and... I, I figure Blake Snell probably says to to Tingler before the game, look, this is a huge game. I got to give you everything I got. Don't right. take me out. You know, none of this five-inning nonsense. You know, I did go seven. I did have 13 strikeouts against Arizona. Let me go. You know, let me stretch out a little bit. Let me put the team on my back. And, and Snell did. But again, for all the griping we've been doing about injuries and the starting pitching staff, Alex, you've been pointing this out for a long time. The bats have gone ice cold. Oh, and and are you? There was a. Um, I wasn't really sure of it. But you said it earlier, but they went ten innings, ten innings in a sixteen inning game with no hits. Mm-hmm. That Correct. is being no hit by a bullpen, not by Walker Bueller, not by Clayton Kershaw, not by Max Scherzer. This is by a bullpen. This is dudes named Gratterall and and a, a lefty named alex and like guys that y'all never heard of for sure that i mean there was 19 total pitchers used yesterday yeah almost 500 and, pitches i think was the number and and two runs scored yeah. through 15 through 14 innings yeah. so Ugh. it was a brutal but at least the dodgers were getting hits they just couldn't capitalize and man like i'm almost at a loss for words with the offense right now because it makes no sense to me maybe they it should have fired the hitting no coach me Oh, he's next. Damn easy. People need to learn your name. Because if they knew your name, we would be calling for you to be fired. Mm-hmm. But now we know it. Yeah. Hey, uh, fire him. Hey, I, I want to ask you guys because I was out in the, like I said, right center field. And um, I was in this, this party zone area, which was great. I had a great time. I've never been there before. And it was awesome. Um, your area looked packed. As oh, it was dude. so packed, dude. And there were Ooh. long lines to get to the bar. And uh, I was just like, whatever, dude, people were coming from the bar and everybody was taking two drinks, you know, so people were handing them out to people (laughs) that were in the line. I drank some whiskey that I'd never had before on ice, which I just was sipping on. It was kind of good. Is the Templeton whiskey free when you sit there? Yeah. Yeah. Which, by the way, my daughter, this is so funny. My daughter's 19. She and her boyfriend go to the game last night. She texts me. She goes, hey, I'm at the game. And she shows me a picture. And I'm like, yeah, well, we must be really close to each other because I'm right here. And I send her a picture. And I'm like, why don't you come down? So she comes on down and she and her boyfriend come in and um, and she tells me they bought like uh, two tickets, 40 bucks a piece. They paid $50 for parking. Okay. I couldn't believe it. And she kept going to me. She kept going. She goes, she goes, it's not your money. It's my money. I work. I'm like, yeah, you're blowing a lot of money on a baseball game. $40 for tickets. So 80 bucks, $50 for parking, 130. They both had a drink in their hands. So, you know, whatever they paid 12 or $14. I'm like, you're into this game for almost 200 bucks tonight. I'm like, why <laughs> do you not, why do you not call me? Why do you not say to me, Hey dad, we want to go to the game tonight. I'm like, I parked in the best parking spot right over there. I walked right in. 
Uh, I'm here. You get free drinks, free food. I'm, what are you doing, kid? Didn't I? Didn't teach you, you admit better? to them that you have no hookups anymore? Well, she. That's exactly what my daughter said. She goes, I. I thought you don't have any hookups anymore. I go, I mean, it, if I'm gonna go to the game, you know, you'll come with me. You know. Maybe she didn't want to go. I was with in you, a, dude. No, she would have. She would have wanted to. I, we hung out the rest of the night. It was awesome. I was definitely I mean, in a hole last you night. Know for you like get stuff for free. I'd have hung out with you too. <laughs> yeah, we should have texted me, dude. We were buying twelve dollars beers. Well, I didn't know. I you texted me and you were like, "You knew I was there." Yeah, but you were over on the third baseline. You didn't get my steps in. Oh, all right. Feeling you. Feeling you. Yeah, I was. I'm, I was in the hole yesterday. At least two fifty. Yeah, I mean, that's tickets, crazy. parking, food. Yeah, I know it's crazy, and I didn't eat anything at the ballpark. Uh, because again, I was in this really crowded area, this big party zone, lots of like what you would call local dignitaries or whatever. And I was sitting there, you know, chatting it out with everybody, not really ever going and grabbing anything to eat, which by the way, I was happy. I didn't cause I got that in and out burger on the way home. And I know it was a little mm -hmm. late to be eating it, but it was cheap and freaking delicious. Oh my God. You know God, what I got? So good. I got an old school classic hot dog last night. I got a fryer Frank How last was it? night fantastic i haven't had a mediocre to subpar hot dog in years nice like i seen i was right next to uh is it randy jones's little spot where he does like italian dogs or like big like italian sausages mm -hmm. i was like oh, i just want like a crappy hot dog mm -hmm. and it was fantastic yeah smothered in mustard it was delicious nice nice yeah hey um so let me tell you guys a quick story browner this one's for you so i go walking into the ballpark right and uh, now I get out to the right field area where we're trying to find this, this Templeton suite, you know, I get out there, I'm wearing like this, uh, what do they call those Alex? Is it three quarter zipper or something like that? Quarter zip. Quarter zip. So I'm wearing this uh -huh. thing called quarter zip and uh, it's long sleeve gray and it's got an SD over here on the chest and I come walking up. Right. And I'm just, and I got a, a brown Padre hat on a gray long sleeve shirt on and, and, you know, I'm just minding my own business. And all of a sudden, just as I'm getting there, dude, and I'm walking down the stairs to get to this temple yeah. suite, these three guys, three guys start yelling, L.A. Cap, L.A. Cap, <laughs> L.A. Cap. I'm like, you've got to be kidding you me. got it, dude. Right? So, so I turn around. They're looking at me. I'm pointing at them. They're pointing at me. They're going, L.A. Cap, L.A. Cap. I go, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. L.A. Cap, L.A. Cap, right? And I'm wearing this three quarter zip, whatever shirt, long sleeve. And I pull my shirt up and underneath it, I'm wearing my swag chain t-shirt. Mm -hmm. They freaking go nuts. The whole section out in right field. I'm not exaggerating when I tell you these are all long time Padre fans. So, you know, I'm going to just qualify them as long time sports radio listeners in San Diego. The whole crowd is going crazy. When I, when I pulled up my shirt and I showed them the swag chain t-shirt, yeah. everybody was going nuts. And here's me. I'm going, Hey, Hey, get your phone out. Take your freaking phone out, man. Get <laughs> your phone and take a picture and then post it and tag me, you know? And these, guys, and these guys did, they, they tagged me in their pictures. It was hilarious. And it was so much fun, man. Just being out in the right field area and being with those fans. Cause I got to say, you know, usually I, I'm not out in the outfield and I'm not saying that to sound like a douche. I'm just saying, I, it's just not usually where I go, but I will go back to this Templeton suite as long as I keep getting invited, man. It was awesome. Um, yesterday, you were asking, should you wear your Show Me Your Tatis t-shirt yeah. or the Swag Chain t-shirt? Yeah. yeah. I totally forgot to mention, and my friends reminded me when they watched the show. They're like, dude, can you tell Scott that the Show Me Your Tatis is for ladies? Yeah. 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 Show Me Your Tatis. Tease. yeah i understood yeah so i shouldn't even i should have mentioned like yeah you can't you're not even supposed to own that <laughs> well fat tony gave it to me what can i tell you man yeah um unless you're showing off your moves i well i would have that i saw yeah, i saw um out in right field down by the foul pole in right field i saw a big fight i was too far from it and i couldn't you know get it on camera but i don't know exactly what happened but there were these cops that came down to get you know to kind of break things up and the next thing you know, the guy who was in the fight started fighting the cop. And the cop and the dude were going, mink, mink, mink. I am really The cop surprised. was. Yeah, oh, the cop was throwing some minks. Damn. And I think maybe even got a few landed on him. Um, I wonder why we're not seeing a lot of videos, fight videos. We got one I video. We got one video weak. that we'll get to. It's weak. I got a different angle though that makes it look a little bit more entertaining. Okay. So yeah, so we got it. We got it going Browner, on. Browner, this is all your fault, by the way, Browner. How so? 
It's all your fault, man. The whole, well, hold on a second. We got to get Browner's mic all fixed up, but I'm telling you right now, the, let's wrap this segment. Okay, good. All right, listen, stick around. We'll get Browner fixed up and, uh, and we'll, we'll get back into what happened last night. The longest baseball game ever since they've instituted the rule with the runner at second base. And we'll talk about that coming up in just a little bit. We are in the seven mile casino studios, Browner, Grande, Kaplan and crew. Stick around, everybody. Great friends, it is a Thursday afternoon here on Kaplan and Crew. We are in the Seven Mile Casino Studios broadcasting on the radio airwaves of the Mightier 1090 on the stream of YouTube. Make sure you get involved in our YouTube chat. And by the way, anybody out there who happens to have videos of fights inside Petco Park last night, Make sure you tweet them to us at Kaplan and crew, because I saw a bunch of them and I'm surprised I haven't seen a whole bunch of videos and how can we possibly review them if we don't have the video? So if you are listening on radio, glad to have you along. If you're watching on YouTube, get involved in the chat. And if you're watching on television tonight, channel Four San Diego, channel Four Santa Barbara, 118 Palos Verdes, 118 Orange County. If you want the full version of the show, youtube.com slash Kaplan and crew. We are in the seven mile casino studios. Now, by the way, Alex, real quick. Um, I see that yeah. seven mile casino has opened a Sammy's wood fire pizza inside yeah. of the casino. And I forgot that back in the day before you went full time into radio and you were back mm -hmm. in the world of being a server, you actually yes. worked at Sammy's wood fire pizza. I worked at Sammy's for like five That's years. Great, man. I, I worked at Sammy's for about five years. I mean, I know the menus changed because I've been I went there like right before COVID hit and the menu had already changed dramatically. And when you did the pre-roll spots, they added brunch. That wasn't a thing when I worked there. Yeah. But yeah, that's where I was a bartender. That's where I was a server. I did uh, yeah, that's it was it was the uh, five years of my life. Yeah, Saturday and Sunday, nine a.m. to three PM, there's brunch. There's uh you're gonna love this because you were talking about this the other day when it was National Waffle Day. You said you're on hashtag team pancake. The choco Correct. chocolate chip pancakes stacked high, drizzled with chocolate ganache. So let me ask yeah. you, what is, is ganache? It, I'm not really sure, but I think that's how you say it. Oh, is it a full on Sammy's or is it a brunch Sammy's? No, 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 it's a full on Sammy's because it's got the entire menu, but on Saturday and Sunday they actually do brunch and they're open 24/7. I'm just reading the email that they sent me. So it's Sammy's restaurant and bar and it's a whole special kind of different place that they've put in all the incredible food that you know from Sammy's nice. from all these years and uh, now they've actually got one in 7 Mile Casino just off the 5 in Bay Boulevard in Chula Vista, Sammy's restaurant and bar at Seven Mile Casino, minutes from downtown. How cool is that? That's very cool. Can I give my full on, like this is what you should order when you yeah, go? Yeah, do it. Okay, you're gonna start off with an order of mini duck tacos. Mm -hmm. Delicious. Mm -hmm. If you wanna do a little salad, obviously the balsamic grilled chicken salad is the way to go. It's the only way to go. It's a great, great salad. For a pizza, my all time favorite pizza is the organic arugula and pear pizza. Okay. If you want it a little more traditional, they have Arugula. the New York. Oh, dude, it's so bomb. You like this is what, what is, I is would that a meat? No, arugula is not it's, meat. It's a vegetable, you know, kind of like in the salad family, but you wouldn't know because you don't eat vegetables. But there is prosciutto oh. on that pizza. Oh, prosciutto, so gorgonzola, or, organic arugula, and balsamic dressing drizzled on top. So good. So bomb. My favorite, my second favorite pizza is the goat cheese pizza, and I add pepperoni. That's nice. It, it is it is delightful. Mm. And of course, if you want to throw like 4,000 calories on your daily diet, the chicken tequila fettuccine is remarkable. Yeah. And all of this now can be had at Seven Mile Casino. How about that? All right. Yeah. Let's jump right into it, fellas. Listen, the Padres last night. I'm going to start off by saying one thing. Browner, this is all your fault. Okay. <laughs> all your fault, Browner. Okay. Here's the deal. I come walking into the ballpark. I come walking in. I'm strutting in, man. I come walking into the ballpark, right? I'm getting down to where I'm going, which is the, this right center field section called the Templeton Whiskey Party Area or whatever it's called, right? My buddy Ernie Hahn, who you guys all know, was hosting a big party there last night. And there were all kinds of people there last night from, uh, you know, Greg Vaughn, Andy Ashby, former Padre players, Nick Hundley. Shout out to my man, Nick Hundley. 
Uh, Way to go, Nick. Uh, right on. Um, there was uh, there uh, former Charger players like Donnie Edwards rocking like some old school Charger gear, which I thought was kind of weird. Ed White, the legendary legendary offensive lineman. Donnie Masick, uh, Rolf Bonershka. I'm just, you know, off the top of my head, there were so many interesting former Chargers and Padres there last night. It was really cool to see the uh, sports community of San Diego coming together last night. So it was really great. Plus, I had a college buddy of mine from New York um, who was in town. He's the guy who puts the deal together between Petco and the Padres. And so he was in town. I haven't seen him in a while. So it was great to visit with my boy, Michael Newman. Shout out to Mike. It was just a great night all the way around. But Browner, I go strutting in, man. I'm walking into my seats, right? I'm walking in. I'm wearing a, a full-length gray uh, three-quarter inch, I think they call it, sweatshirt. It has an SD over here on the side. I got on a brown Padres hat with the yellow SD. And all of a sudden, these dudes start yelling at me. <laughs> L.A. cap. L.A. cap. L.A. cap. Now, the whole section is like starting to look around like, Oh, okay. I know that dude right there. Okay. I know that guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know? And, um, and, uh, I've turned around at these dudes, right. And some of them are wearing Padre gear and some of them are wearing Dodger gear and they're all hanging out together. They're all homies. Right. And they're yelling LA cap, LA cap, LA cap. I turn around and go, Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Mofos. And I was using real language. Oh yeah. Mother effers. That's right. LA caps in this mother effort. And you know what I did, Browner? Let me tell you what I did. I was like on Bourbon Street, Browner. You want some beads? You want some? Yeah, that's Showed right. So here's what I did. I took this gray shirt. I lifted it up. And underneath it was the swag chain t-shirt. And I'm not joking. I am not joking. The place explodes, dude. The place goes crazy. I'm, dude, we're talking like the place is <sighs> it's packed. It's jam packed. So in this section, you know, there's a few hundred people, right? LA cap. L.A. Cap. Uh, I go, oh, yeah, L.A. Cap? L.A. Cap's in the house, mofos. I pull up my shirt. I'm rocking the swag chain. The place goes nuts. And I'm yelling this at him, Browner. <laughs> I like a pro wrestler. I'm yelling at him. Take your freaking phones out. Get, no, hey, get your phone. Get your phone. Open it up. Take a picture. Take a, <laughs> take a video. Okay? Tag me in it. L.A. Cap? Yeah, L.A. Cap got his swag chain on. That's, that's right. L.A. Cap in the house. I'm so confused. How is it? So aren't you, are you thanking me? What's happening here? No, I'm not thanking you. Why LA not? Cap. What is you, LA uh, Cap? You know how much admiration you got from an entire section of fans? You're welcome, L.A. What are you mad at me for? L.A. Brown. L.A. Brown. Listen, L.A. Listen. Brown. If I, would, if I was there, I would have thrown it up. <laughs> I'd have thrown it up, bro. I'd have thrown it up. You crazy. <laughs> I'm rock. I'm gross. I'm rocking with it. Y'all call me what y'all want. I'm rocking with it. Her boat. Hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. So look. Okay. I, okay. Disgrace. You you sat next to a guy with a glove. Get out of here. Yeah, I did. Proudly. It was embarrassing. You sat next to a grown guy. man last night wearing a baseball glove at the game. Well, it was my fiance to my left, the, another lady, and then the dude in a glove, and I was like, Mar, look at that idiot, and she's like, oh, it's embarrassing. <laughs> It's like I really hope a foul ball comes over here and smacks that dude in the face. I am telling you guys right now, I don't not one ounce of exaggeration, not one. I promise you guys, where Tatis hit that home run last night, I would have gotten that ball. And it was really funny because I was hanging out with Fat Tony and his son Fat Boy. Fat Boy is getting ready to leave to go to the U.S. Army, and uh, and when when Tatis hit that home run, because Fat Boy and Fat Tony they were still there at the game last night. Did he catch it? Fat Boy missed it. And I could see Fat Boy's <laughs> girlfriend chasing after it. And I was laughing because at this point, I'm already home. I'm sitting on the couch. My daughter Jillian is with me and because my daughter Jillian and I had hung out together at the game. And I come home and she's already in bed. And I go, what are you doing? She goes, I'm going to sleep. I go, uh-uh. No, 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 no. Get up. Come out to the couch with me. <laughs> You're going to watch the rest of the game. She goes, no, I don't want to watch the rest of the game. I'm like, dude, you spent all this money to go, all this money to park. You were there for 12 innings. Now you're not going to watch the end of the game. Get up. So she came out into the family room. We sat on the couch and we watched the rest of the game together. And she was pissed at me because obviously the Padres lost. She's like I had to get up and come out here and not be sleeping. We watch the Padres lose again. Like, yeah. And my kids are asking me this question. Yeah. Like, dad, why do they suck again? We don't get it, dad. Why do the Padres suck again? What do you say to kids? Did you bring out a scroll? And you're like, well, 
well, <laughs> this is why. <laughs> Dude, Here's a I didn't reasons. have a full, I didn't have a full section chanting LA cap at me or anything, but I had the most random encounter as I was trying to get into the game. Yeah. We went in from the uh, Tony Gwynn drive side. Um, and this dude in full Padres makes a beeline for him. I'm telling you, I'm in security. <laughs> I'm almost at the metal detector, me and my fiance. And this dude just sees me. Make We make eye contact. And I'm like, hey. And he's like, and he comes right at me. He goes, brother, how have you been, dude? They're my boys over here. And I'm like, yeah, what's up? <laughs> no idea who this dude is. <laughs> no clue. And, you know, doing this show for as long as I have, I do. I, I mean, we all get recognized a little bit. I, I mean, me, very minimal, but so in, in real life now, I'm like, okay, should I know this person in real life or does this person recognize me from the show? And this guy made it seem like I need to know this guy in real life. And I'm like, oh, crap. I have no idea who this dude is. So I went in, handshake, hug. <laughs> What's up, bro? How you been, man? <laughs> and he goes, dude, been listening to you forever. And I'm like, oh, crap. Okay. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> don't know him. <laughs> I don't know. I'm like, okay, cool. And he's like, dude like dude you're my boy and i was like yeah i am yes <laughs> i am your boy <laughs> and, I'm, and then he looks at my fiance i'm like hey this is uh my f i introduced my fiance i didn't know who i was still confused dude that was the most random in because this guy I, I i didn't even catch his name it was a quick hitter dude he came in half dab hug and in and out have didn't even get a chance to ask him his name how he watches us or listens nothing it was like it was like a sniper attack. I got to tell you, man, I, I had this interaction with these two gentlemen. All the L.A. Cap people, Browner, were yelling at me, and they were Dodger fans and Padre fans. So L.A. Cap, L.A. Cap. I pull up my shirt, swag chain. Everybody's going crazy. As I get ready to leave the ballpark, As because now it's like the 12th inning, and I figure I'm going to put my head down because the people are going to shame me for leaving early, right? And, and they should. And there were all these, like, you know, great friends that were sitting out in that section. I was high fiving everybody and, you know, thanking everybody for listening and watching. No, I can't believe how many people tell me though, that they watch the show on TV, but there was this uh, young fella. His name is Max and uh, Grande on his uh, Instagram bio. He says, tal vez no te pienso, pero no te olvido. Tal vez yo te extraño, pero no lo digo. Okay. You know what that means? Say it again. Well, let's go line by line because your reading is tal, tal vez, vez perhaps. No te pienso. I don't think. Pero about no you. te olvido. But I won't forget. Tal vez about yo you. te extraño, extraño. Perhaps, perhaps I miss Pero you. Pero no lo digo. But yeah. I won't. Is that a Drake it? lyric? No, this is I don't know, man. This is Max in Espanol. <laughs> it's gotta but be so, now. So Max and his buddy, uh, his one friend, his name is Joey Gonzalez. Uh, Max and Joey, as I'm on my way out, one guy's in his Dodger gear, one guy's in his Padre gear, and they're like, "Yo, can we grab a picture?" And I'm like, "Yeah, for sure, dude." And this guy Max puts out this this picture on Instagram, and he says, "Childhood hero, no doubt. Been listening to this guy since 2006, and that's my man." And then he tweet, and then he and then he nice. got me. He goes, hey, it's 1243. It's 3-3, three, three, and I'm still here. <laughs> nice. I saw Brittany Ehren stayed the whole time. That was yeah, impressive. Yeah. I had another encounter, but it wasn't an encounter. And I wasn't going to mention it, but screw it. I'll mention it. I was in the bathroom oh, on the boy. third base side. Yeah. Packed as hell. Flooded. Disgusting. Like, I don't know who peed on the entire floor. Everybody. Just gross. Gross. <laughs> gross. Like, I was like, if I didn't, if I legitimately wasn't about to pee my pants, I would just hold it. It was disgusting in there. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, stalls are open or a urinal opens and right in the middle. I'm like, all right, whatever. Let's, I have my mask on in the bathroom because you fools are gross. And that's pee particle. It don't matter. And, and I'm walking to the urinal and who's on the right? Alvaro Jacobo. Oh, right oh there. my God. He's got long hair uh, now and everything. Oh, you got long hair? Yeah. And I legit was like, okay, Alvaro, like nothing against him. I love He always says, what's up? But I am not going to dap a dude up when he's got his thing in his hand. I'm not going to do it. So I ignore him. And I legitimately was like, okay, he's to my right. I'm going to go like this. <laughs> so he doesn't look to the left. Again, I'm, I have a mask on and a hat on. I'm like, don't recognize me right now. Don't try and I don't know if he would like, I'm just, a, I, he's such a friendly dude that I, I just figured he would be like, yo, grande, you know, and I didn't want to have that interaction. And then I peed super fast, pushed it out as fast as I could. And I'm like, 
and I turn to my left and I'm like, let's go this way. <laughs> if he sees me, he sees me, but not while our junk's in our hands, yeah. dude. So I don't even know if he saw me or not, Alvaro, dude, but I, I, I saw him. I speak to that guy. I'm not joking. I speak to him every week because we, we communicate on like direct message on Facebook. That is hilarious. It's so great to be yeah. at the ballpark last night and be with See what everybody. happens when you don't sit in the seats behind the plate, dog. You go out, you're amongst the people, you get the yeah. love. No, it was great. With our people. It was great. It, it, I, I will tell you guys, I really did. Um, Cause it was kind of funny. We were, we were walking out, you know, and as we're, as we're leaving me, uh, Dato, my daughter and her boyfriend, we're all walking out together and I'm telling you, I'm getting a lot of love from the fans. And I, I'm so appreciative of that. So thank you guys, but I, I'm getting a lot of love. And these two like Irish guys with these Irish accents say to my daughter, they go, who is this guy? Is he somebody famous or something? And my daughter goes, no, it's just my dad. He's on sports radio. And they're like, oh, okay, whatever. And, but they were <laughs> but like, because people were taking pictures with me and whatever. And, and I was so happy to do it. And, um, and they're like, who is that guy? Nah, he's nobody. And that's, that's, that's just the reality. So, all right, listen, look, my fiance asked me how often you get recognized because when we go out, I get, I get recognized and she's like, how much does Scott get recognized? And I'm like, at these events, probably a lot, oh, dude, you got to Rachel, yeah. when we go out to dinner and stuff and I'm again, I'm always flattered. Rachel's like, I can't believe how we can't just go have dinner like it without people. And it's always dudes. And it's always the same story. It's always a guy and a girl. Hey doing man but listen forever i'm a huge fan great friends love you brother and then he's like and then he they, they look to their girlfriend and they go this is the guy i tell you that i listen to on radio since i was a little kid he's the guy I, you're always telling me right, to turn and, off and, in the and, car when right, we're driving girlfriend's like i have no idea who you are don't care and i'll always look at her and go don't worry i'm nobody trust me it's no big deal you know so anyway listen it was i'm just la cap yeah, no just big la it. cap <laughs> la cap hey, look, yeah. crap. And i'm like hey, look, here's crap. that swag chain mofos <laughs> Take a look at it. Rock it. You're welcome. Swag chain. You're welcome. I like you just had to blame me for something awesome that happened to you last night. Cool. <laughs> I wish you would have recorded that. I know. Somebody, me like a drone following you around. Mm, that's hilarious. All right, let, let's do this. Let's turn our attentions to the actual game and what happened during the game. Before I get there, I do want to tell everybody about a brand new sponsor on the show. This is I Thrive MD. And the website that you should use is ithrivemd.com slash Kaplan. We'll put it up on the screen. Uh, we'll make sure that we get it all set up for you. But here's the best way to go visit iThriveMD. Alex, if you could take everybody to our website, kaplanandcrew.com. There's Frank Caliendo. There's Drew Brees. There's Kevin Harlan. There's me. Hey, I know that guy. LA there Cap. he is. If you go to the iThriveMD logo right here, click on this, and this is going to take you right to this landing page, iThriveMD.com slash Kaplan. So look, for anybody who is a great friend, we have a special offer for you. And if you click on that orange button right there, it's going to take you directly down to it. Here it is. Um, look, and, and I'll just, as Alex, hold this page for a second. And I'm going to tell everybody, look, mm -hmm. fellas, I've been talking about testosterone for many, many years. I've been taking testosterone for a very long time. Here's why. Did you know that one in three guys over the age of 40 has a low testosterone issue? Now, when you have low testosterone, you may be fatigued. You may have low sex drive. Guys, this is a real problem for many of you. Uh, okay, erectile dysfunction. Here's another problem that you may not even be thinking about. Depression, brain fog, muscle loss. Well, I Thrive MD is San Diego's leading anti-aging and performance optimization clinic, which is kind of a fancy way of saying that if you're having problems sleeping, if you're having problems with your weight, if you're having problems with muscle loss, all of these issues, diabetes, it, it all is kind of connected. And what these guys can do is not just testosterone. This is about a healthy lifestyle. This is about longevity. Um, and the treatments will improve your energy. They'll improve your sex drive, mental clarity, vitality. And it, it really, really works. So if you suffer from fatigue, brain fog, all the things I mentioned before, you really could be an ideal candidate for iThrive MD. I'll give you a phone number. The phone number is 858 240-1497, 858-240-1497. I'll get this stuff up on the screen for those of you that are watching on TV and watching on YouTube in the next couple of days. 858-240-1497. But again, ithrivemd.com slash Kaplan, ithrivemd.com slash Kaplan. I have been working with Dr. Samir Dahani, who is the uh, guy who runs, and I say guy, I mean, he's a board certified radiologist. He's actually an amazing, a cardiologist rather, excuse me. Uh, really an amazing gentleman. I've been working with him for six weeks because I've been going to the clinic. I've been getting treatments. I've been learning more about what they do. We've been formulating the, the message that we want to send to you guys. 
And today I'm happy to announce that iThrive MD is a brand new sponsor of Kaplan and Crew. iThriveMD.com slash Kaplan. And there's a special uh, special offer for those of you that are listeners and viewers. So please check out this brand new sponsor, iThrive MD. Okay, let's keep things going. Alex, let's go to some of the slides here because we got to show everybody what happened last night. And um, this is the longest game since baseball put in the extra inning rule of starting a runner at second base. Grande, take it away. Last night, 16 innings. Like you said, the longest runner since uh, this new rule or the longest game since this new rule was implemented. Five hours and 45 minutes. That's the longest game of the season previous. I believe it was five hours and nine minutes by the uh, Reds game earlier. It ended at 12.59 a.m. today on Thursday. And a total of 19 pitchers used, and the Dodgers ended up winning 5-3. to three. Yep. Hey, you see all those people in the background? For those of you that are watching on TV or watching on YouTube, um, for those of you listening on radio, we're looking at the scoreboard. And um, you can see that by this time of night, because now we're going into the bottom of the 16th inning, it, the stands are pretty empty. I will give credit to the Dodger fans in this respect. You guys seem to have stayed a lot longer, <laughs> you know, like the Dodger, well, yeah. the Dodger fans are like, I either drove down here or I rarely drive up to see my team play. So I'm not going anywhere. So listen, you know what I see in that me. picture? You know what I see tell in that picture? I see a big fat four under H for the Padres in 16. Yeah, minutes. four hits, four hits, four hits. Truly amazing. My I know. Goodness. Incredible. All right. Stick around, everybody, because what we'll do is this. We will get to the game itself. We will get to the fights in the stands that happened last night, and we are looking for more of those videos if you have them. Along with Grande and the Brown Man, this is Kaplan and crew from the Seven Mile Casino Studios. Hey, great friends. Welcome back to the Seven Mile Casino Studios here of Kaplan and crew. As we talked about a little bit earlier, Seven Mile Casino now features Sammy's Woodfire Pizza. And I'm not so sure that that's exactly what they're calling it, but that's the brand you know for all these years here in San Diego. And Alex, earlier in the show, designed an entire menu for you because he used to be a server at Sammy's, <laughs> which I thought was really cool, man. <laughs> I thought it was great. You still knew that much on the menu. Bro, it's like I, I I can probably still name you like 80% of the menu, like top of my head. Dude, that is so funny. I got this email from uh, my man, Big Brad, and uh, he was telling me because, you know, he represents Seven Mile Casino. He's like, dude, they have put a Sammy's now, Sammy's Restaurant and Bar. They've put it in at Seven Mile Casino just minutes from downtown San Diego. He's like, you got to hype this thing because people who already love coming down for – poker and blackjack and other table games they're going to be so happy when they get down there and they see that the restaurant which was already great but now has been transitioned by the way brunch saturday and sunday 9 a.m to 3 p.m i can't i can't even i can keep raving over and over again but the fact that they've now put a sammy's in seven mile casino is really oh cool. dude i didn't even mention the uh the sliders they do they do on hawaiian rolls with kobe beef gorgonzola, gorgonzola cheese uh they're so freaking stupidly good too i like, love it those Maybe I should go to Sammy's tonight. Yeah. Yeah. I love it, man. At seven mile. It's a good yeah, idea. It's a good idea. Very good call. All right. Hey, listen, let's uh, let's jump back into what happened last night at the game because we spent a segment kind of messing around about what was happening in the stands and hanging out with great friends and high-fiving people. And, uh, and you know, somebody said to me last night, they go, hey, man, are you uh, – because I actually – at one point in the game, I was standing there talking to a buddy of mine, and I, I started coughing a little bit. <clears throat> I just got, like, something in my throat. And he goes, hey, are you uh, are you over COVID, dude, or are you okay? I'm like, yeah, yeah, man, I'm good. It's been like, I don't know, three, four weeks, something like that. And he goes, really, four weeks? I don't think it's been four weeks. I'm like, maybe it hasn't, but it kind of makes it sound better. <laughs> Feels right? like it. Right, it kind of sounds a little bit better if I tell you. I cannot believe I was up till 1 o'clock in the morning last night watching a freaking baseball game only to have the Padres ultimately lose at home. Look, guys, I said this before this series. You guys kind of said you didn't agree with me, but here's what I said. I felt like this was a make-or-break series. Browner argued that it's not make-or-break because there's still 30-plus games, and there's still a race going on between the Padres and the Reds, and even if they were swept, as Browner predicted they would be, and are on the verge of being, now the Reds right. are too. And, and exactly. The, and the Reds are playing Milwaukee, which is a you know a top top level team. So the thing is, is that I said that if they were swept in this series, this would be the end of the season because this would be make or break. Grande said, no, 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 you're wrong. Season's already broken, smart guy. Okay. But what I'm saying is this 
it's a what nail I'm in the coffin. Is, is that it's it's an it's an emotional demoralizing downer. They've already lost the series. We'll see what happens later tonight. They um, they might salvage a game, and even if they do, so what? Listen, I will say one great thing about this Padre team. Okay, for as bad as their bats have been, the the pitching and the bullpen came to the rescue last night. And I thought even at Tatis, who looks so different in the outfield, because I was sitting out there in right field, so I got to see his body language. I think he looks bored. I think they should, if they want a spark of some kind, they should immediately move him, move him back to shortstop. And I just think that if they get swept, even though they're not mathematically eliminated, I just think that they are like emotionally devastated. You know, and we'll see. I mean, maybe I'll be proven wrong, and I hope I am. But um, I really, I, I didn't see, I didn't feel like this series has been one of the emotional, debilitating type of series. I feel like you got such a great performance from Snell last night. Watching him come off the field and having people just absolutely cheer him the way that they should have because the way that he performed, that was a great building block from other players being injured. And now today you get Darvish back, and if he puts out a strong performance, we're uh, we're back on track. We're back on track because our best two pitchers are now back firing on all cylinders because we got that you-know-who out of town. So uh, we'll see, man. We'll see. Blake Snell was on fire last night. That was that was a couple of good things to take away from that game that I'm really excited about. I'm Actually, I got I to gotta agree with you, which, and I'll agree in this way. As much as I think of it as being demoralizing, especially if they get swept, I got to say one thing about this team. They showed a ton of heart last night. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, to think that Tatis was 0 for 6 with four strikeouts before he hit that home run that tied the game and extended the game, I got to give him credit. I mean, they they did show a lot of heart, a lot of resiliency, a lot of fight. For that, about I will this. give them a lot of credit. If you find yourself in a one-game playoff against these guys, no matter who they throw out, look what you've seen Blake Snell do against them all season. So you know who's taking the ball in a one-game playoff against the Dodgers, Blake Snell. So now that gives you a comfort level in a one-game playoff that you know your guy goes to the mound. He can shut their bats down, and all we got to do as an offense is show up. That's it is 100. You're correct. Though. That's easier said than done. When you're looking at this offense, I don't know. I don't get it. I don't understand what the struggle is. Like, what is the struggle here? Like, it's not just one guy; it's every guy. If it's not, if it's if it's not everybody in the top half, it's everybody in the bottom half. It it seems like there's just a complete lack of of just a game plan when a, when they go up to bat. Like, so they try and they and they and they go and they try and attack early on, doesn't work. Then they try and work out pitches, doesn't work. I don't un I don't understand what's going on with the hitting, and I'm now on team fire, Damian Easley. But let's just scapegoat everybody. Hmm. Why not, right? Let's just scapegoat everybody. Well, let's go to some of the highlights from last night. You know, it's really interesting that two nights ago, A.J. Pollock pulls down that Manny Machado, what would have been home run, and everybody was complaining how the fans didn't interfere. How about Will Myers last night and the catch he made in the exact same spot? Now, before you show this, Alex, put it up on the screen. I want to show you who's sitting behind home plate here because the seats that I like to sit in, those seats right behind home plate, I got my buddy Jeff Jacobs. Shout out to my boy JJ. I got my buddy Dave Vigil sitting right next to him. Shout out to my boy Dave Vigil. And then check out the two coaches. There's Coach Fisher and yeah, there's Coach Dutch Dutcher. And there they are. Coach Fisher and Coach mm -hmm. Dutcher right behind home plate, hanging out with my boys last night who are both big San Diego State fans and big, huge San Diego State basketball supporters. Take a look at this Will Myers play in almost the exact same spot that A.J. Pollock robbed Manny Machado the night before. Go ahead and play that. This was early. In right. Fly ball. Struck well to deep left. Myers going back. At the wall. He makes the catch. Right in front of the wall. While you take a look at what these fans are doing. The exact same thing the fans did with AJ Pollock. Nothing. But except this is the right, <laughs> right thing to do today. <laughs> right. <They backed> up. <laughs> yeah. Look at this. Look at this photo. They literally have their hands on their yeah. chest. Everybody's like, get away, except, except the Dodger yeah, fan. The two Dodger, well, that woman looks terrified. Yeah, that woman looks terrified. But look at the dude in the sunglasses and the dude next to him in the Tatis jersey. They're like, nope, not touching it, not touching it. So shout out to those two brothers right there. Yeah. Knowing what to do. Yeah, They knew exactly what to and do. And their do eyes are reach. open. Well, the, the one oh, guy with the sunglasses, yeah, you can't tell what his deal is. <laughs> his eyes are so open. He has sunglasses. So open. <laughs> yeah. There was another. Shot. There was another great catch out in center field. 
that Grisham robbed a home run. It was a Max Muncy shot, and Grisham's going back, and uh, and Tatis is going back, and Grisham goes up to make this grab, and I do think the ball would have been out off Muncy's bat if Grisham doesn't bring it home. Can you play that one, Alex? Yes, I can. All right, can. let's take a look at this one. For those of you that are listening on radio, you're going to have to come watch the YouTube show. You've been practicing your golf go. game. That's what you've been doing. So, got a little long drive. Oh, and a nice catch by Trent Christian. I'm like, yeah, he got it. He, he made it easy for us. Like I said, Finn made it easy for me. And like I said, I could be in left field. I didn't have to move. Scott, I don't know how it was. Remember that fort ball I threw to Black? I don't know how it was for you out in the Templeton yeah. area, but I was sitting on the on the third base mm -hmm. side. And I couldn't tell on the okay on the Will Myers one. I'm right there. I'm literally right there, and I thought it was out, so I didn't even get yeah. up. I was like, "Well, that's freaking gone." And then I look to my right, and there's Padre fans cheering, and I'm like, "Wait, did he catch that?" And I get up, I'm like, "Okay, he caught it." But on the Grisham one, I was near Alvaro Jacobo, and I legitimately had no idea if it was a home run or if or if he caught it. Like on that side of the stadium, it was fifty fifty. Yeah. I couldn't tell who was cheering for yeah. what. Yeah, well, that's just it, is that it was really interesting to to be in the ballpark last night. When the Padres made a play, you could hear a roar. When the Dodgers made a play, you could hear a roar. It, 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 you just couldn't tell if you closed your eyes. You would not know where you were. The, the let's go Padres mm -hmm. chant definitely drowned out the let's go Dodgers chant. You know, they're so similar. Yeah. But at least from where I was sitting, the let's go Padres fans – I definitely outdid it. So that makes me believe that there was more Padre fans there. Maybe not necessarily where I was sitting. Yeah. But 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 the beat LA chant was not real enthusiastic from my perspective. Well, it's so they they crank it up to like 12 on the speakers yeah. too. It's hard to hear anything. Yeah. Can we address something uh, that's clearly happening? When you play that, when you play that play, uh, he makes a great play at the wall. Fan makes a great play at the wall. Tatis, you're talking about the Grisham play? Grisham? Yeah, I'm sorry. The Grisham play. Tatis, no energy. No energy. So, Scott, maybe maybe it's time to move him back to short. I would move him back to short. I mean, honestly, guys, I sat right behind Tatis the entire night. Like, like replay the just, catch. He just looked bored. Is bored and is bored and disengaged two different yes. things? Because I don't think he's bored. I think he's disengaged. I think that's, that's, a, that's that an outfield. Lead. Well, I think it could be leading to his his disengagement at the plate. It's almost like he's not as locked in, not as focused as as when, he would when be when he's at when short. You're at short, okay. You're you you sort of feel. Like every you're pitch. involved in every play, right? You know, when you're in right field, you kind of feel like you're just being stuck there because you're not, you know, a great player. I mean, right field is usually where I think you, I think of it as being a place where you hide somebody, although you don't hide Mookie Betts out there in right field. But seriously, like, I, I just feel like Tatis looks like a guy who both defensively, he looks like he's bored in the outfield. And I think it's leading to a lot of the problems at the plate. If, if it were me and I were the manager of this team, and I'm looking for a spark. What can I do to mm -hmm. create a spark? I just put Tatis back at short. Bring the energy back to the middle of the field is what I'm saying. It can't hurt. It can't at this route. It can't hurt. hurt. Yeah. What's it going to hurt? Well, you, you, his oh, shoulder. Geez. Same thing. Could Been there, done out. that. Been there, done that, man. At this point, yeah. at the rate they're going, you need you need to do whatever you can. And if that is an unfortunate circumstance of him going back wow. to short, then it is what it is. But like I said, they shouldn't have put him out there in the first place. You should have let him play as short. Kept kept the situation the same. You you just don't mess with your best player like that. Baseball is such a psychological game, and I think him being out in right field has taken away from his ability to lock in on the game. So when he gets to when he gets up to the plate. His swings are just like, okay. Like that home run he hit, That's, I think he just ran into it. Well, I mean, that home run was very fortunate because really, I'm trying to remember who it was. Was it um, – who was the outfielder at the time for the Dodgers? I, yeah. At well, that point, who knows? I, well, I, I'd have me. to go back and look. But I think, I think <laughs> it actually hit his glove and kind of then went out, you know, or hit the top of the wall. It hit just the top of the look, wall, yeah. It didn't look real clean. Like he didn't really get it, get it, you know. It just made it out. Yeah. Oh, well, no, now we're no, going to no. criticize his home run. I'm going to tell you right now that was clutch. Oh, he didn't. That was he clutch barely hit it for a guy <laughs> who was 0 for six with four strikeouts. That was clutch, man. I got to give him all the credit. You know. Yeah, that went from his worst game of his career dude, to like salvageable. Dude, he, you know, like two run home run that kept the game going. I mean, he saved them and gave yep. them another chance. All right, hold on one second. I want to hear from Jace Tingler in one minute. But do we have I do, to? Well, since everybody's now finally calling for his firing, 
Um, everybody got to see last night him get completely outmanaged by Dave Roberts. We'll get there in one second, but I want to talk to everybody out there who loves sports wagering. Let me talk to you about BetUS. So uh, I knew BetUS was going to become a sponsor of the show. So I went and I put $100 into an account at BetUS because I wanted to use the website, see what it was all about. Before I told you guys about it, I thought I should actually experience it on my, experience it on my own. I bet on some uh, preseason NFL football games last weekend. And I don't know why. I don't know why. I was just like, whatever. I got to try it out. I got to give it a shot. It's it's preseason football. I'm probably not even going to be watching these, but I think these guys will beat those guys just based on who they are. And I want a couple of dollars. The nice thing about BetUS is, Alex, if you can put up their website, if I'm able to do this, you're able to do this. If I was able to create an account online, you can too. But if you need to call, you can call 1-800-79-BETUS. That's 1-800-79-BETUS. And they'll walk you through setting up an account. Um, here's the thing about BetUS. They've been in business for 25 years. And when you're talking about online wagering, you need to know that you're working with somebody who's been around for a long time and that you're going to get paid. Okay. And if you want live betting with MMA, golf, I personally like horse racing, esports. there's all kinds of crazy bets that you can make. And here's the best part of it really is nobody will give you this bonus, a 200% bonus when you use our promo code, which is 1090, you get a 200% bonus on your first deposit. So go to betus.com, join, put in the promo code 1090. You're going to get a 200% bonus on your first deposit. And it's real easy to use betus.com, betus.com. And super happy to be adding new uh, ad partners all the time, because let's face it, fellas, uh, as you guys know better than anybody else, but you two. Uh, and for anybody that's been watching for a long time, remember, April of 2019, we go off the radio. April of 2019 until August of 2020, we are exclusively podcasting. 20, uh, August 17th, 2020, we go back on radio. We've added television. Uh, we're on all the audio podcast platforms. And as a result, thanks to you, all the people that listen, all the people that watch on TV, watch on, on YouTube, um, all of these companies are seeing the value of, of the great friends audience. So thanks to everybody. And thanks to bet us for being a new sponsor, BetUS.com. Use the promo code 1090. All right, guys, let's hear what Jace Tingler had to say after the game, by the way, anybody watching, you see me looking to my right. It's because I got multiple computers going on here and I'm, I'm watching different stuff. Alex, can you play for us? What Jace Tingler had to say? Well, yeah, I got to explain what it is because it won't make any sort of sense. If I just play it straight up, this is the question was asked multiple times, according to reporters, why he didn't do the double switch with with Kim, which then led to having that pitcher spot keep coming up right after Cronenworth in the fifth spot, and this was his answer. I that question. We, we we just you know win as is, and you know we were trying to you know obviously score runs, but obviously keep them off the board, and and, and ultimately that's you know that that's what we did. Browner, yeah, there's your manager, Browner. <laughs> there's your man. What does that even answer? What? That sounds like some I say. What are you talking about? You know, Alex, it was a really great setup. If you could go back to it, set it up again, and then we'll listen to it again. The questions were about the double switch. And what, what he did was is he he took out – well, go ahead. You explain it because – Yesterday, Aaron Nola was hitting right. fifth. Austin mm -hmm. Nola, excuse me. Aaron, his brother, who almost no hit us. Uh, and when this 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 rule came into effect – so he didn't want Nola to lead off at sec or to be the runner on second base. Mm -hmm. So he pinch ran with Hassan Kim at second base. They did not score, obviously. So instead of doing a double switch, where then you can take put Kim into Frazier's spot and put the pitcher spot at eighth instead of fifth to be right behind your two best hitters, he decided to leave Frazier in, and thus the pitcher spot became that fifth spot. Which, which is, is why, why Dave which, Robert, right, which, Dave Roberts walked right. You, you would, Machado, Cronin were three innings in a row, right. and then you had Musgrove, Weathers, and uh, Cam, did Camarena. Yes, Camarena did hit. Yeah, Cameron, No, he didn't. No hit. grand slam. He didn't hit, but he got he got an at bat. So that's exactly right. right. So so when you were wondering, well, why he would walk Manny Machado, he would walk mm -hmm. Cronenworth because he's getting to Musgrove. Didn't care about weathers. loading bases or anything right. like that at and, all. Just and, and you know, if you were watching the game at this point, the announcers were like, "Well, Musgrove can hit." Well, Weathers can hit. Well, Camarena hit a grand slam. It's like just covering. It's just like guys. Cover it's like guys. Really, here's the thing. All we're talking about now is is that pitchers are going to save the day with their bats. Come on, fellas. Seriously, I mean, 
I mean, how many times did the Padres just need a sack fly and they couldn't nope, even they get couldn't. that? So the, the um, man was out there managing for a miracle, and it wasn't coming. You, you like know what he, he was, was doing, but all at the same time, though, like let's not forget something happened with Will Myers. He got taken yes, out early. That's fair. Um, he put in Marisnik, and then Marisnik never even got an at bat, so he just wasted Marisnik because I think he pinch hit with Tommy Pham, and then ta- that when it was clear that whoever hit there was going to get intentionally walked too, so they he pinch hit for Marisnik with Tommy Pham. Tommy Pham got intentionally walked, so it was like a wash. So Marisnik was just a waste of a player. I would tell you. Like, there was so many things. You left Blake Snell in for the eighth inning. I didn't have a problem with that. I I I had a huge problem with that. I didn't have a huge problem with it either because I I thought, you know what, if I'm a player and I can convince my manager to let my team ride on my back, I thought it was actually a gutsy performance. And I'm cooking. You you know what I thought, though? When I listen to to Jay Stingler, we'll play it again. Here's my thought. That's a guy playing not to win. He's a, mm. you know like you know the difference between mm. like playing not to lose versus playing yeah. to win like like to me that's a guy that's playing defense rather than playing offense. I heard somebody call him that's a good point. I heard somebody call him Norv Tingler instead of Jace <laughs> Tingler. Like they called him Norv Tingler because he, he the only the only like the only rationale there is no rationale but the only rationale if you're Jace Tingler is obviously nobody expected this game to go 16 innings. So Every game in baseball ends at the 11th now. Like, that's just Roughly, like the yeah. longest they go. That's the longest they go. So, if you're managing to win immediately, that makes sense. And no one ever expected you to go 16. So, it gets highlighted when you when your offense stinks. Just the simple well, fact. But, but like, play it one more time. Cause I mean, you talk about a guy who just doesn't have an answer, you know, and, and gets called out essentially for not having an answer. Play it one more time. I, we, we, we just, you know, win as is. And, you know, we were trying to, you know, obviously score runs, but obviously keep them off the board. And, and, and ultimately that's, you know, that that's what we did. You know what, man? Win as is. Win as is. I just love how, how when he was hired, man, all you heard about, he's an energy guy. He relates oh. to the players. He's a guy who really knows the game. No, no, no. He's a guy who worked underneath A.J. Preller in Texas philosophically he buys into what AJ Preller is selling and AJ Preller can control him and the Padres listen I'm saying it okay maybe people don't want to hear it I'm saying it the Padres have made one monster mistake in all of this organizationally they put all of their faith and their trust into Preller and Preller doesn't have a track record of success it's no different than what the Chargers did with Tom Telesco Okay, we'll talk more about this coming up, but but I have a great tease for you. What's the great tease? Will Jace Tingler be back next year? We have a definitive answer. Okay, and we'll do flight analysis coming up. Stick around, everybody. Kaplan and crew, we are in the Seven Mile Casino Studios, and we're coming right back. Great friends, what is up? It is a Thursday afternoon. Our top story this entire week here on Kaplan and Crew has been the Padres hosting the Dodgers. The Dodgers have taken the first two games of this series. It is a huge national story, not because the Padres are are really now a threat to the Dodgers anymore, but really because last night was the longest game, uh, five hours and 49 minutes. It didn't end until early this Thursday morning. It was the longest game since baseball instituted the new rule of starting uh, with a runner on second base. By the way, interestingly, I got a text message from a friend of mine who's not like the world's biggest baseball fan, but he he actually sent me an interesting message. Grande and Browner, you guys will like this. And then we'll get to what Alex said, which is he's got the answers as to whether or not Jace Tingler will be back next year for the Padres. But take a listen to this. Uh, his buddy of mine sends me a text this morning. He goes, I haven't been to a baseball game in about five years and I don't really watch baseball on TV that much anymore. But I was at the game yesterday. He goes, and in my opinion, what I saw, that is not baseball. <laughs> <laughs> he said, between the 12 fights that I witnessed, the walk rule, the guy on second base, and any extra rules and some other stuff, he goes, I was completely shocked at what was going on last night. And I thought that was really an interesting observation. Like for somebody that's not really watching baseball every day, to see that you can walk a guy without actually having to pitch to him, to see that you can walk guys back to back as quickly as the as the Dodgers were able to, so that they could get to the Padres pitcher who was coming up, and then to to uh, to not know about all these new rules that are happening. You know, guys starting on second base. 
this, this buddy of mine was like, I've been to baseball game in a while and I don't really watch it that much, but these new rules, that's not really baseball to me. I thought that was kind of funny. Yeah, obviously it's going to be difficult for like a casual fan to keep up if a man can keep up. It's going to be hard for a casual fan to keep up if what? If a manager can't even keep up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you broke up for a second. I'm glad you repeated it. Good yeah. line, Grande. Good line. Yeah, I mean, Jesus, right. like, 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 what do we expect from a casual fan who doesn't watch baseball that often? Like, manager can't even do it. He has no idea what to do with his lineup card. Man, I'm telling you, that soundbite that we played just a little bit earlier, for those of you that are just getting with us, Jace Tingler, after last night's game, being asked what he was doing and and why he wasn't double switching and and why pitchers were hitting and and so Tingler really honestly if you play it one more time he just he was like ah, I don't know man I I don't really know when what it, I was doing when it is I, we 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 just you know when is is and you know we were trying to you know obviously score runs but obviously keep them off the board and and, and ultimately that's you know that that's what we did. Yeah, obviously yeah, we yeah, yeah, off the board. Obviously, we tried to keep yeah. them off the board. Obviously, that's right. He, he's probably a nice man. He probably really is. I don't know him as a person, but this guy's not a good baseball manager, dude. He's not. And maybe you're right. No, I've been the person telling people from day one that this wasn't the guy. If if you really think that AJ Preller won't, and you guys know I'm a huge fan of AJ Preller. Why? If he if he won't, because look at what he's done to this roster. Yeah, he had money to spend. I get it. Before you guys start saying, "Well, he, this is the first time he ever had money," he had money to spend. He went out. I thought he spent the money smart, smartly. Injuries have gotten in the way. The the fumble at the trade deadline. I understand that as well. But if you're going to tell me that he doesn't want to hire a manager because he wants someone who he can control, then to me that's a huge sign of weakness from A.J. Preller's standpoint, about his own security in the, in the selections that he's made in the offseason or going forward if you can't get rid of this guy who's now shown you that he is not up to snuff when it comes to managing. Well, I'm and, glad but, you bring that up. I'm glad you bring that up because we have an answer. Our old pal Marty Caswell directly asked A.J. Preller if Jace Tingler will be the manager in 2022. Like, directly to his face. Okay. And he answered it. Let's hear it. All right, let's hear it. Is Jace Tingler a lock for next season, regardless of how of how this team finishes this season? Yeah, I mean, he, again, I think, uh, you know, the organization, we have a lot of faith in Jace. He's done a great job here over the last year and a half. Um, a lot of faith in him this last month of the year. And, you know, again, I think for us, like, expectation really for the, for, you know, I think we talked about expectation for the staff. Don't really see any changes here this year. And for next year, I think it speaks volumes in terms of, like, letting Jace make those types of calls. Um, you know, He's a talented young manager, and when we hired him, we want him to be here for, you know, for a decade. And I think that's uh, that's 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 the feeling here, you know, as we stand today. A lot of words just say yes that he's the guy. Yes. <laughs> he is. So I don't annoying. believe that. He is so annoying. I, I swear. I don't. Be, I don't believe that. No. He, no. 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 That was you. not. That was the old vote of confidence. No, man. He. He. Listen. This is the problem. I'm telling Tell you. Me. I'm telling you as a matter of fact, the problem is, is that Ron Fowler, when Ron was the owner in charge, Ron Fowler became fascinated with AJ Preller. He's so smart. He's such a baseball savant. He works 24 hours a day. He (laughs) travels the world looking for talent. There's nobody in baseball like this guy. I'm telling you, the previous owner, the previous operating partner was enamored with AJ Preller. And what he tried to do, Ron Fowler, was say, look, I'm a beer man. I made a lot of money as a beer guy. You know what? I'm not, I'm a baseball fan, but I'm not a baseball expert. I'm not a talent scouting expert, but AJ Preller is. And you know what I'm going to do? Instead of micromanaging, because I don't really, really, really know this. I just have the money to own it. I'm going to hand it off to this guy because I think he's the brightest young mind in baseball. That is exactly where the problem lies. Letting A.J. Preller completely run everything when it comes to this baseball team is a mistake. Because what you do, Browner, your point about showing weakness, you're exactly right. Preller is a control guy and general managers in sports all the time become control guys. But at some point 
just the same way Ron Fowler said, I'm not an expert in this. You go handle this part of it. AJ Preller should say, I'm really great at finding talent and scouring the world for talent and signing guys and doing deals. But you know what? I'm really, really not. I'm not a baseball in-game manager. And an in-game manager is a different skill set than a general manager. But because baseball has become ruled by nerds who just follow analytics and they don't actually yeah. have a gut, they don't have a feel for the game. That's why AJ Preller can't go out and hire a guy like a Bruce Bochy. And I'm using him as an example because everybody here right. knows him, loves him, and knows his track record of success. He can't let go. So what AJ Preller has to do is he has to go back into his background and say, this is a guy that I was working with, I was cultivating, he believes in my philosophy, he's young, he's inexpensive, and he's controllable, and that's why we have to have a guy like Jace Tingler. And to me, the biggest problem the Padres have as an organization and will continue to have is there's too much faith in this general manager. He is not the only guy out there. They've got Tatis long-term. They've got Machado long-term. They've got Snell locked up. They've got Darvish. They've got Clevenger coming back. They've uh, Listen, I'm not saying the roster is World Series worthy. I'm just saying that there are other GMs that can do this job, and there are other managers that can do their job much better than what Tingler's doing. And in my opinion, I'll say it. I know it's not a popular opinion. Rockstar GM nonsense. This too much control for one guy. That's my opinion. If you watch them flame out, they got about, what, 32 games left? 30, 32 games? I'll have to look up and give you the exact let's say uh, Let's just call the number 32 for the sake of the argument. If they lose uh, 25 out of the next 32, eh, you got to fire a lot of people. You spent too much money. You got no results. They were For some reason, they were good. They started to tail off. That's that's an issue within the organization on many levels. People have to be fired. I'm I'm sorry. Who that is? That's not my decision. I know who I would think it should be. But when you tank like this at the end, like because this is tanking, they're not running out of gas. They're tanking. They're choking yeah, tank, the season but, away. But tanking is like intentionally doing that. Fair. They're choking the season away. They're choking the season away on multiple levels, whether it be from an injury standpoint, whether it be from a non-hitting standpoint, and whether it be from a manager not knowing what he's doing in, in too many critical moments throughout the season standpoint. They're choking the season away. I think People need to be held accountable. You're clearly like I, they're, you're living in a dream world where you think that Jay Singler is going to get fired and they're going to replace him with someone not exactly like Jay Singler. So that's oh, for sure. That's, that's exactly what, what, what that's look at what, the pattern, dude. Right. There's Andy a pattern. Green, Jace Tingler. Right. Yeah, exactly what I'm saying. Like, it doesn't matter. Like when if you want real, real change, it starts at the top because the manager is going to be brought in. Who's just as milk toast as this one. Who's going to be a no name dude that AJ has relationships with back in Texas or maybe someone that's already in the triple A. If, I don't, who if, knows who it is. If you cut the checks, you look at him and you say, bring somebody in here who I know. Bring a name in here yeah, to manage this roster that I recognize because I'm cutting the check. It won't happen. Here's what here's what I think has to happen. Okay, and I, and listen, I'm not saying it has to happen 100 after this season, but if I'm Peter Seidler, and I'm and listen, I know Peter loves to listen to 1090, and I know Peter like when he he goes on his late night walks, he likes to listen to our podcast. Peter, look, I know philosophically you feel like. You're a hands-off guy. You invest in people. You trust in people. You hire experts. That's your game. I totally get it. But AJ Preller has somehow sold this organization on this notion that he's the smartest guy in baseball. He's not. There are plenty of other smart people in baseball. There are plenty of other people that can do as good, if not a better job of constructing a roster. The problem with this Padres team is, in my opinion, is that they keep hiring these little managers with no experience. And I say little. I don't mean to necessarily mention their stature. Uh, but that, but that too. But, that listen, was very I, accurate. I, listen, let me tell you something. I, I, I've told this story. Um, I've never really mentioned who said this, but um, former Padre front office official who played for the Padres, you can probably start to figure it out now, was in on many of those Andy Green interviews. And he told me the story of them looking around as the former players in the room going, 
that little guy will never be able to manage major league ball players because he's a little guy. And I'm like, what does that have to do with anything? They're like, Bochi had this stature, this, he was almost physically intimidating in some ways. Now you're hiring these little short guys. And I listen again, we can argue about height. <laughs> I'm trying to man, tell just you say what you got to say, man. What I'm saying is, is that you're hiring a puppet. Thank you. That's a all. little one at that. A little yeah, puppet. You're, you're, you're a little guy that you can put no, on your mannequin. lap. You're a little puppet. And that's, that's what the problem is, is that everybody in that clubhouse knows that their manager is not running Jack squat. Okay. And, and I'm telling Peter Seidler that AJ Preller is not the only guy in baseball. He's not the smartest guy in baseball. Well, Theo Epstein is available, but I, that's a big check. That's a big, is big he check. available? Yeah. Yeah. I like the cushiest job of all time. Like baseball's like VP now or something for who? For baseball, for MLB. Yeah, I just uh, a, guy I mean, like, Theo, a, a guy like that wants to be in the in the game, dog. A Theo like already said. I don't know. They say he want, he might might want to be the commissioner. The Theo also said that if he ever does get back in, he wants a piece of the ownership. Well, you know what? Um, Give that's some. a smart move. Well, that's a smart <laughs> move, and the reason that that he wants a piece of the ownership is because he wants to have long term security. And look who yeah. Joe and look who Theo Epstein brought in. Big personalities like. Terry Francona, Joe big Madden. personalities like Joe Madden, not being scared of having a manager with an opinion, bringing no, in a baseball mind. Bring yeah, in what he also brought in? Proven. World Series. To, yes. You know what? I'm just, I'm so annoyed by AJ Preller because if you go back to that question, you know, and, and Marty's right. You know, he, it's a lot of words to just say yes. Like mm -hmm. he's always having to talk around everything. It's like he's but he stopped saying yeah, his no. decision. Yeah, I don't know true. if you remember when he was when like I don't know how many people listened back then, but we interviewed AJ Preller weekly when we were the home of the Padres, and he would always go yeah no to every yeah. single answer. He got rid of that yeah. out of his vocabulary. Yeah. yeah no yeah yeah no yeah. is 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 Tingler definitely going to be back next year? Yeah no yeah no I mean, yeah, I mean, what yeah, I'm saying yeah, is yeah. Yeah, yeah all right listen we are in the Seven Mile <laughs> Casino Studios. Let me just just play that one more time. I, I am. I just want you to hear it one more time. Want to see him squirm again? You like it. I, I love watching him squirm. <laughs> Which and, one? And, did he even go well, like right, this? I don't remember, them. but did he go, uh, yeah, you know. You know I feel like he here, did that. Here's our former colleague and our, our friend still, Marty Caswell. Hi, Marty. <laughs> putting it to A.J. Preller. Jace Tingler, a lock for next season, regardless of how of how this team finishes this season? Yeah, I mean, he, again, I think uh, – you know, the organization, we have a lot of faith in Jace. He's done a great job here over the last year and a half. Um, a lot of faith in him this last month of the year. And, you know, again, I think for us, like, expectation really for the, for, you know, I think we talked about expectation for the staff. Don't really see any changes here this year. And for next year, I think it speaks volumes in terms of, like, letting Jace make those types of calls. Um, you know, he's a talented young manager. And when we hired him, we wanted him to be here for, you know, for a decade. And I think that's, uh, that's, that's, that's the feeling here, you know, as we stand today. A lot of words to just say yes that he's the guy yes <laughs> he is such a dork seriously and and <laughs> i don't I, and 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 it's like it's so annoying because you know what he says we have so much faith in him we think he's such a talented young manager we really believe in him the last month of the season that's not true you do one guy does maybe Peter one does. guy you keep talking and he's talking about the staff they already fired a guy off the staff so you that's really what he was that much in the staff. But that's what he meant by like we let him make these decisions. That's how much we trust him. Because if you remember, Jay Stingler said this was 100 percent my decision. Come on. Hey, you that's listen. Nonsense. Okay, whether you believe it or not, the message is on point. Okay. They they are they have aligned their messages and they are going with don't it. shoot me, shoot him. That's at what least, that sounds at least like. they are like straightforward and they're on the same page with their lies. At least mm -hmm. no, I okay. can respect that. You know, all right. Well, listen again, I, I'm just saying this. Um AJ Preller has been living in this honeymoon. The honeymoon the first time around was rock star GM. We're going to get Matt Kemp and James Shields. By the way, I saw James Shields last night at the ball game. He was out in that same section. Um, we're going to go out and get all these named guys. And, and then it didn't work. So then it's going to go from, well, we tried that. Let's go back to building the minor league system. So then the minor league system, ooh, number one, Baseball America, best minor league system. In the meantime, your, your number one prospect can't make it to the big leagues when you're in absolute desperation mode and your number one prospect is a pitcher. So the first way that he wanted to do it, buying a bunch of players, that didn't work. The next way, which is build your farm system, that really didn't work. A.J. Preller's entire reputation right now is about one thing trading James Shields 
and getting Fernando Tatis. If this team doesn't have Fernando Tatis and that trade doesn't go down, or if Tatis doesn't become the player he has, then A.J. Preller, nobody thinks of him as being this great. And now here we are. He went out and signed all these pitchers. He went out and spent all this money, and there was all of this hope, and it's all falling apart. And in my opinion, the biggest problem they have is giving him too much control, particularly when it comes to the team. Building a roster is fine. Doing deals is fine. Give the team to a manager who knows how to manage and get the get out of the way. Ooh, that's Ooh. a big. Uh, that's big a big. Pff. That's a big if, though, dude. That was a big. Pff. Right you know what we're talking about, like all the all the words that happened before the before the word but. Mm-hmm. Like that's a big if because Fernando Tatis Jr. is the biggest if in baseball. If he didn't get the best player in baseball, so right. Gotta I mean, give him credit for that. It's huge. Yep, I do give him credit. I do give him credit for it. I give him a ton of credit for it. I agree yeah. with everything you're saying, and I. But if if I agree with everything you're saying, I think he needs to hire a manager that can come in and just take control of the clubhouse, the team, the inside of the lock of the clubhouse. Mm-hmm. I agree with that 100. But I'm not going to diminish him like AJ Preller's what he's done to the roster for what it from what it was. Right. Because that's what I, I'm like, saying. And all the reports are are clear. Ron Fowler said, go get players now. This wasn't like an AJ Preller decision. Like, I'm going to go to like, they're like, let's win now. It didn't work. So they started all over. So yep. from that moment of 2015 to here, yeah, he's completely changed his franchise. You can't like diminish that either. Um, No, but again, if somebody <laughs> else were a general ownership manager, said 2022, don't forget yep. that either. Okay. So okay. when you, well, right, listen, please. No, so no. when you're, so when no. you're talking about firing Jace, firing AJ, it's not going to happen. Because ownership said 2022. Yeah, you know what I don't like said, about that? They also said last year heads were going to roll if they didn't make the postseason. They made the yeah. postseason and Ron's, Ron's head rolled. Yeah. So they yeah. weren't lying either. The yeah. idea that this specific year we're going to compete, there are no guarantees. The competition is in front of you right now. The moment is in front of you right now. I don't, next year may be a completely different set of circumstances. Why, why, why focus on that? Or why throw that out there for anybody at any point in time? I'm not telling when you you're, guys when that you're, you're available to compete right now. I'm not telling you guys that you're right or wrong. I'm just telling you guys. I know. That I'm just no, saying. Neither of those guys is going anywhere. It's All just right. frustrating. Well, it's just well, frustrating. It's, it's really unfortunate that, Again, the, the Padres have so much faith in a guy who doesn't have this track record of success. If you told me, hey, we're going to hand over the organization to Theo Epstein, I'd say, okay, I got it. Track record of success. If you told me they were going to hand over the organization to Andrew Friedman, I go, okay, I, I, I see what Andrew Friedman did with the Dodgers. But I never saw what AJ Preller, what, what the Padres saw. They're, they're I'm just, taking the it, other side because I feel like you guys are also forgetting the fact that the Padres were like the worst franchise in all of baseball. Like mm-hmm. completely ass terrible, just mm-hmm. embarrassment of a franchise, and now yeah. they're not. This and it's like in baseball, in baseball is not football. It's not overnight. It's not one year. Like so, when you're expecting World Series because it's the first year that they're able to compete, it's just not a reality. Okay, I'm the person. You. I'm the person saying don't. And last year doesn't count. Him. It was a freaking sixty games. Don't I'm count. saying get rid of the manager, and if by proxy because the manager is who he is. You're going to just bring in another one of those. Then if you do that, then yeah, now I'm looking at him, but I've said it from the beginning. I thought what this roster was when I started watching the Padres and this franchise was, and what they are now is completely different. And I credit him with that. Well, I I would credit him um, for making the move to trade shields for Tatis and for Tatis becoming the star that he is that AJ Preller gets all the credit in my opinion, not, I mean, Tatis gets the credit for being the player, but it was a great yeah. move. But but what I'm saying to you is, is that, you see, the thing was, we never held the Padres to a standard. We never, we never had expectations. We always felt sorry for the Padres. Now we don't feel that way anymore. So demand excellence. That's really mm-hmm. where I'm coming from. Demand excellence. All right, Alex, how much time do I have here? Got to go. Before we hit now. this break. Okay. All right. Stick around. We're coming right back. Fight videos from inside the stands. We are in the Seven Mile Casino Studios. Stick around, everybody. Hey, great friends. It is a Thursday afternoon. You know, we've spent a lot of this day today here on Kaplan and crew from the seven mile casino studios. We spent a lot of today talking about the Padres and the Dodgers and what happened and managerial mistakes and post-game press conferences and, uh, you know, uh, getting an endorsement from the general manager. And we've got a lot of criticism flying everywhere. So we, we've been talking a lot about the Padres and the Dodgers. Clearly it's been our lead story and we'll find out if the Padres can salvage one game 
tonight. Uh, I wouldn't think so. I mean, you're, you're talking about Max Scherzer, who's, you know, kind of at his best. And you're talking about you Darvish, who's coming off the injured list. So, I mean, I would say advantage goes to the Dodgers and we're looking at a possible sweep, but maybe the Padres who showed a lot of heart and showed a lot of fight last night uh, and didn't go just cowering away. Maybe the Padres will come up with a way to salvage Can one I game in the series. Present a question to you. Question. What if what if you Darvish is Blake Snelly tonight? Gives you eight innings, thirteen Ks. Are we ready to blame the pitching coach? No. It's a very good question. I mean, listen, Snell was great. I told you that two days ago, I think it was Pagan who pitched in relief and said it's the best he's felt since uh, since he's been there. You know, thought he had his best stuff. Hmm. So I don't know. I mean, I, listen, I told you this, and 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 I knew I was right when I said that that Larry Rothschild was scapegoated. And as soon as Jace Tingler came out and said, "No, he's not a scapegoat," that's like well, saying it's not about the money. Yeah, that's what Browner's <laughs> saying. That three games of good pitching means he wasn't a scapegoat. He was a problem. Right. And to me, oh, I say, yeah. hell no. You need way more than three games. How many do you need? Like the rest of the season. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. So if they finish out this last stretch then with clearly ER, Roth, well, yeah, two it, and a half, three ER ERA, mm -hmm. then we can blame Larry Rothschild. Hey, look. And then we'll start blaming that they took too damn long to fire. <laughs> yeah. Or 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 we'll or we'll blame or we'll blame that they should never have hired Browder, him. Because, Browder, because there were a lot sports, of nasty reviews in, 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 before he even got here. We're talk show, man. We got to blame somebody for something. If they, yeah, if, every day. if Rothschild if Rothschild was the problem, then I will yell all off season that they took too damn long to fire him. That's fair. The collapse will be on Rothschild. It's like you only mm -hmm. gave us five weeks of Rothschildless pitching. What the <laughs> hell? Yeah, that's Jace Tingler's fault. There no, we go. It's AJ yeah. Preller's fault because AJ Back Preller hired one. Jace Tingler. I love yeah. it. And none of us are blaming the players, which is fascinating to me too. <laughs> like, like I mean, honestly, dude. Like, look at this. And how have we not yelled at players? Like, how can you look at this offensive slump in the last thirteen games where they have the lowest batting average in baseball? Never should the Padres have the lowest batting average in baseball with this lineup. They're fully healthy. With with runners in scoring position, they're even worse. They were 168. They got no hit on August 14th. And yesterday, for 10 freaking innings, they got no hits off a of bullpen. Like, blame the players, too. Step up. Every single one of you fools are healthy. All of you are healthy. Yeah, Step fools. up. Do better. Yeah, wow. fools. Wow. Yeah, be wow. better. Yeah, wow. I was talked. I talked about the show how like uh, how there was a tangible, finally a visual thing that we could blame a uh, Jace Tingler for. We've had thirteen games of trash in front of our eyes, and yet we can't blame the players. No, it's in front of us. Do better. There you go. You're gonna go blame yeah. Damian Easley for all your problems. You gonna blame Jace Tingler most, for all your problems? Which player gets the most blame? All of them. There's not no, one no, player. No, 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 no. I'm not letting you off the hook. Adam Pick Frazier. One. Okay. That, thank you. There we go. There we go. I'd say Manny Machado. Why? To me, he's the leader. He's the veteran. Mm -hmm. He's the swag chain originator. Um, to me, if there's one guy that I look to and I go, okay, well, somebody got to get this clubhouse together, that's the guy that should be doing it. Okay. That's the guy with the most clout. I mean, All what right. was the last time, like, anyone – that wasn't an all-star in this team had like some sort of significant hit. Hmm. Um, I'd like say... it's even difficult to pick the all-stars. I mean, if you Cronenworth had the one on Saturday when they were getting no hit to right. tease kind of had, well, to tease did have one yesterday. Man, Fra would have had Frazier, one the day before. Frazier's never had one. Um, so it's just, yeah. I mean, you can literally point at every single person on this offense be like, you stink right now. Mm -hmm. I would say Jerks and Profar, the two-run home run that he hit two nights ago, and then the at-bat he had off Kenley Jansen. I mean, th those are great at-bats. Good point. You know? And so, listen, that didn't I, matter. I would, no, no, I realize it didn't matter, and that's because <laughs> that's because he he worked Kenley Jansen for twelve pitches, got on base, and then Adam Frazier goes up there and takes three swings and doesn't you, do anything. You told the man to name somebody not all star that has some good at-bats. He gave you one. You go, I said significant hits. Nothing. Well, the significant hit is Profar's home run two nights ago. Yeah. God, right. like that. Look, at this guy. Look, at, no, look at No, I'm emphasizing oh. my point of how bad they are. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't think it's difficult to highlight how bad they are when you could just look, watch a game. Watch a game, dude. They're bad. Know. And the one the run they scored yesterday. You yeah. remember how it came before the extra innings? I don't. Not, not at this moment. I Will don't. Myers swung his ass off 
and it barely it was like a sacri- it was like a squeeze bunt. The dribbler. It was a dribble yeah. dribbler. That's the yeah. only reason that's the only run you they scored yesterday. I think I think it happened before I actually got to the game last night. I think it was early, yeah. wasn't it? My fiance goes, Did he do that on purpose? Like, no. He swung his he <laughs> swung his brains out. How about later in the game when the when the Dodgers were trying to balk to get the runner from second to third and the relief pitcher, I'm trying to remember who it was, like dropped the ball intentionally. And they're like, what the hell was that? Was that a balk? Was it not a balk? Then they they moved the runner from third back to second. And then they came back and he, then he intentionally balked. Like he actually went through the process of balking and they were like, did he just do that on purpose? Yes, he did. He tried yeah. to move the runner to third. That's that's what happened. Yeah, and then Kenley Jansen's little like like twitch, ass twitch oh, thing that he does is so weird. It's so oh weird. Oh my God. It is just the most annoying thing to watch his delivery. Jansen's yeah. delivery. It's right, not listen. illegal because he does it every time. So like yeah. that's part of that's officially like part of his motion. If it wasn't yeah. part of a motion, yes, it's one hundred percent illegal. JB. Okay. All right, yeah. I want to get to two more things though, uh, real quickly. I want to get to the highlight of the day with Tori Holistics, and I want to get into some stadium fights because we, I'm surprised we haven't had a lot of videos sent to us because I saw a lot of fighting going on in the stands, and there Lots. just isn't a lot of video to support. Um, but before I get there, I want to make a couple of quick mentions. One. Today is Thursday, which means that Del Mar is open again. Now it's a little bit later into the afternoon and the racetrack opened at two, but Friday, four o'clock Friday coming up tomorrow and then a full weekend of racing Saturday and Sunday. So I'm Alex, I didn't even look ahead at the schedule. Who do the Padres play after the Dodgers series is over? Oh, who do they have coming up? The other LA team, Shohei Otani comes to town. Oh, really? Oh, no. Interesting. Are they in LA? They might be in LA. They might, LA, you mean Anaheim? Anaheim? No, I don't mean Anaheim. You mean Orange County? Yeah, uh, they are uh, the Dodger. Excuse me, the Padres go to Los Angeles to play the Angels. Okay, great. They're playing at Dodger Stadium. Is that the deal? No, they're playing in in Los Angeles Angels Stadium in Anaheim. Got it. Uh, so look, I'm telling you right now, like if these guys get swept today, I, I I think for me, I may start checking out. Look, I'll be at the track this weekend. If anybody wants to hang out, party, have a Del Margarita, a skinny Del Margarita, a nice cold beer. Watch horse racing. Be around beautiful people in phenomenal weather and enjoy the remainder of this summer. I will see you at Del Mar. Racing started earlier today. It's on again tomorrow, Friday. We'll be there Saturday and Sunday. If you want to come hang out, we'll be at Del Mar and looking forward to seeing everybody. But right now, I got to go back to stadium fights. I'm sitting out in, in, in right center field last night, and I could see in right field, there were several fights that broke out. You were in at the hard corner. Point, yeah, at one point, a cop comes in, and I'm like, what's going on up there? And there's this cop, and he's trying to break things up. And the next thing you know, the guy fighting is fighting the cop, dude. He's literally fighting a uniformed police officer, an SDPD officer. And the cop, mink, mink, mink. <laughs> I can't believe there's no video of this cop. Here's what I want. I want the body video footage. Body cam? Yeah. Body I want to see the cop in the fight from right here. So... Alex, I know you got at least one video of some stuff that went down last right. night. Right, kind of, kind of lame video. Uh, but you're right, Scott. From my angle, you were in the hot area, dude. Like that, that right field foul pole was hot. It was hot, dude. It's a hot cat. That's, that's the LA cap area, dude. That thing. <laughs> I'm telling you, like, I don't know what was going on over there, but oh, I'll tell you, lots I'll of security. LA Cap was over there. No, no. Uh, Fat Tony explained it to me. Fat Tony and I were hanging out together last night. And Fat Tony explained to me what the problem is. He says, you got all the LA Cholos. He goes, and then you got all the San Diego dumbasses. So when you put Mm. these people together and they start drinking, that's why you have all these fights. So I don't know if that's actually accurate, but that's my man, Fat Tony. That's his analysis. And I'm just passing. The only thing that we had on our side, dude, was this guy holding up a sign. Let me try and pull it up. This guy was just egging everybody. I had a sign that said, hey, ESPN, can you please remind us who's in first place? Go Giants. And he was wearing mm-hmm. a Giants Hawaiian shirt. Mm-hmm. I, legitimately, he's the only he's the only action on that on my side. People okay. were throwing peanuts at him, throwing water mm-hmm. at him, and security was just letting it happen. It was hilarious. And I was like, dude, you two guys, you two security dudes, you doofuses got it easy. Look over there. Look at your coworkers. They're getting yeah. beat up. Yeah. So so there's this one video of these guys wearing Padres jerseys and they get into it with this other guy. And the one thing I really hate is when people take cheap shots in fights. Yeah. So so take Dang. a look at this guy, this guy in the oh, yellow oh. hat right and here. And his just, girl just, gets him gets him beat up because his girl's trying to stop it. She's in the red hat and she brings him down. And yep. that's when the Padre jerseys go after him. So his girl put him in a disadvantage. Uh, unfortunately, because he got taken down into the row in front of him, 
And that's and when she's he started. down too. She's in there. Look, somebody's holding her back. Look at the guy in the brown yeah. holding her. And look her. at this idiot in the white jersey. I hate him. This he came out of nowhere. Chain? Which, which, no, the, which, oh, no. The old school oh, yeah. white the old jersey. School Padre jersey. He's yeah. the one that came in, was not part of the fight, and just came in just to punch the guy. Yeah. The yeah. cheap ass punk. <laughs> Catch me outside. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Look I hate guy, that, dude. The guy in the Tatis jersey. He now they're they're like looking at each other, squaring off. Now there's like three of them. What are these guys like five feet tall? Yeah, All no, look, four he, of they, them. They, I will say the guy with the girl who who kind of got him punched. Look, he's he still wants some more. Yeah, I think I went what to high school a... with these guys. But <laughs> everybody, every Edgar looked like that. God, yeah. this guy, he just keeps getting, <laughs> he just keeps going down on the chairs. More yeah, his girl yeah. kept his girl took him down twice, dude. That's not cool. Uh, here's a different angle. Looks look gives it a little bit more. Uh, I love the title of this. Foo's gone wild. Oh, that's a fantastic Twitter uh, TikTok account, by the way. Foo's gone wild is a great TikTok account. Everyone should follow. Dude, it. Look, look at these guys. It's like guys. There's this girl in between. She is just making a mess of this situation. Yeah, she though. really is. She really is. And uh, Again, Cholo you, number one wearing a, a Hurley hat. That doesn't go. <laughs> don't help. The, no, that doesn't go with the outfit. Uh, is he wearing Vans? Look at that. You see? Oh, you see? Look at these guys. Oh, a kick. They're holding them and then they're they're punching at them, you know, man. You know what I think's happened here, guys? You know what I think? I think ever since the uh, Suns and Four guy got all this notoriety for stadium fights, I honestly think people are going there looking for fights. Like I'm looking for it. I hope you have your video cameras out. I hope to win and I hope to go viral. We I need mean, to I, check. I really think that we need to check those three gentlemen for the criteria for stadium fight guy. Are they wearing undershirts? We need to check their haircuts, and we need to check if they're wearing giveaway jerseys. No, uh, there's no there's no Edgar haircuts. They're all wearing hats. They all just get knocked off. Uh, the girlfriend, though, she's like, stop, 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 stop. And he's like, no, man, I want more. I want all I three want of these. Little and stoppers. these those those two guys are wearing actual bot jerseys. And look, the guy that comes in in the white jersey, though, I'm not sure. That might be a, a giveaway. I don't know. Dude, that that's guy, definitely a giveaway. That's that a giveaway. Guy, that guy comes from out of nowhere, and he's and the guy's being held, and he punches him in the face. That guy, yeah. that, that he guy needs to be. Lame. He's like the lady that threw the soda. Like she, he's the only person that needs to be prosecuted. Like he but needs to that? go. He needs to go clean freeways for five weekends in a row. Dude, and here's here's another thing. If you're the female in that situation, move, move out the way. I get it. You're trying to protect your boyfriend. You're trying to not have the fight happen. But at this point. And when he starts throwing punches over you, yeah, you need to move. Well, you need you to see, move. Did you see the guy? There was a big guy wearing like a brown t-shirt, mm -hmm. and he actually yeah. bear hugs her. If you mm -hmm. play it one more time, Alex, you'll see it. He kind of bear hugs her. This one or the like, other one? Who's going um, Let's see. Look at these three guys. Look at they're just everybody's just swinging. Oh, the one guy in the yellow hat. He kind of got the guy a little bit. I, are these guys all Padre fans? It's I don't know what appears to be. Appears to be the 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 guy that that gets knocked down by his girlfriend's definitely got the free Padres yellow hat though. Oh yeah 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 yeah. Oh man man Look, he gets the, she's she's in the way man. You see this mm. guy comes in and he's like the guy in the brown. He's like I gotta get this girl out of here man. You could have really got hurt too. I hate the guy in the white jersey. I hate the guy so much. Oh my! Look, I grew. She's, she's right back in it, dude. I grew. Girl. I grew up with guys like this. Like I hate the guy in the white jersey. I know so many dudes like that. Oh my god! Like flashbacks to my <laughs> middle school and high school years right now. Because idiots that come in just to get a free shot when they had nothing to do with it. I know. It. I hate oh. that. Oh my goodness. Oh my god. All right. Well, listen. Hey, um, real quick. I want on a scale of fights people. that was a that was low. That was a two. That was a low. two. Yeah, that that was was a two. All right, let's do this, Grande. Um, with the time that we have left here, let's get into it here. Let's get to today's Tory Holistics highlight of the day, man. Let's do this. What do you say? It's time for the highlight of the day, man. Do you want to get high, man? I'm just really high. Highlight of the day is brought to you by Tory Holistics. Uh, if you go to kaplanandcrew.com, click the Tory Holistics banner, you're going to get 20% off with the promo code Grande at checkout after you spend $75. Spend seventy five dollars, put Grande at checkout, boom, twenty percent off. Uh, I don't know if this is enough time, guys. I was going to talk about Rachel Nichols. Ooh, uh, she's going to be yeah. my hit list this morning. Yeah, so we King got man. we got about six minutes here. Uh, oh, I could fun. I could go with Shohei. No, no, no let's, let's go Rachel. Rachel Nichols. Let's talk about Rachel Nichols. Well, it's not really a highlight, but it's just the talking piece that we haven't got to. Rachel you know, Nichols. We haven't gotten to it. You're right. Uh, the jump got canceled. That's her. That was her show. 
that mm-hmm. was on for five seasons, I believe, five NBA seasons. Mm-hmm. And ESPN also announced that she has been removed from all NBA coverage. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, she's been, I think she's been removed from ESPN television. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, then this is what she wrote on Instagram. Got to create a whole show and spend five years hanging out with some of my favorite people, talking about one of my favorite things. An eternal thank you to our amazing producers and crew. The jump was never built to last forever, but but it sure was fun. More to come. I doubt that last sentence, though. I really do. I really do. They did put home basketball because that was all she could really do. I watched her attempt to cover other things. I think she genuinely had a love for basketball, and that's what made the segments. Where did she work before? Fun. ESPN. No, she was just wasn't she with stuff. CNN? Wasn't she? Yes, with CNN? I think she was with CNN. I'm almost sure she was at CNN before. Oh, I've never seen her at CNN. She was at ESPN. I'm almost think, sure she I'm, was. I think she might have. Was she with Turner yeah. too? I, I think like that Turner CNN been. family. We'd have to Google it just to make sure, but I'm almost positive that she was like a sports reporter for CNN of some kind prior to getting to ESPN. Let, let me say this. So it's really interesting to me because I read an article today in the New York Post. For those of you guys that are into this kind of stuff. You know, we talked about Rachel Nichols a few weeks ago, when, probably a couple months ago when the NBA finals were going on and the whole Maria Taylor controversy. And I thought it was super interesting today. I read an article in the New York Post. This guy, his name's Andrew Marchand. He covers TV, sports coverage and media and so on. And um, he was talking about how ESPN, this is his point, ESPN could not have screwed this thing up worse. Th- this is his point. He goes, look, you got... One woman, Maria Taylor, you got another woman, Rachel Nichols. Maria Taylor has now already left for NBC. And now Rachel Nichols and this show, The Jump, is off TV, canceled, and she's out. And by the way, from what I understand, this is according to the report, Rachel Nichols is going to be bought out of her contract one year to go $2 million. Can you imagine? Somebody Mm. pay me $2 million to go away, please. Will somebody do that for me? No? LA cap. LA cap. I mean, I just wish listen, somebody would ESPN pay me. ESPN might write. Hey, listen, you keep acting up at ESPN. They might, they might uh, <laughs> cut you a little checkity check to go about your business. Dude, I, I, I swear to you, man, I, I must be the least paid person that works at ESPN. <laughs> Seriously, I must be the lowest of the low. They're like, hey, let's take a look at the talent. Here's Stephen A. Smith, all the way up top here, and this, Ooh. who's this guy, Kaplan, down at the bottom here, because the, the way they pay at ESPN, uh, apparently, Is either all the nothing. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I guess I'm on the nothing side. You know, um, I wish somebody would pay me two million dollars to go away. This is nobody. They pay you because Stephen A. took all the money. That's true. All I know is this is that Rachel Nichols um, for a year, they sat on this story of her saying what she said about Maria Taylor. Mm -hmm. They tried to negotiate between the two of them to get them to get along. It didn't happen. It didn't work. Both hated each other. Both resented each other, et cetera, et cetera. And in the final analysis, this is what the article in The New York Post was saying is, Now you've lost Maria Taylor. Not that it's going to change your business. And now you've lost Rachel Nichols. So you sat on this story for a year. You tried to get these two to work together for a year. And finally, ultimately, both are gone. What a disaster, according to this report in the New York Post about ESPN. Look, I don't know how you guys feel about it. Rachel Nichols to me, just like Maria Taylor to me. Nothing spectacular. Nothing that's going to change your business. People aren't going to be up in arms about it. People aren't going to stop watching ESPN as a result. But I just find these stories to be fascinating. All the inner office drama, which is, by the way, Alex, why I love the morning show so much with Jennifer Aniston. So good. That It's so good. And, and look at all the drama that happens behind the scenes at ESPN. What did you guys think? I thought I like the show. I'm, I'm sad like that nothing. it's gone. Yeah. What I like the say, show. Alex? Nothing. <laughs> when I read the story, I was like, oh. I like the show. I'm sad that it's gone. I wish they would have replaced her with somebody else. They will. But they're going to make a. Sh- they're going to the make. Show. They're going to make the exact same show. They're going to make the exact, exact same show. It's going to be Kendrick Perkins. It's going to be whoever else is their NBA Richard head. Jefferson. And it's going to be a different host. Right. It'll be George Sedano. Or That's who I hope host. I hope Malika they let Andrews. George. No, 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 no. George should host that show. George has a good feel for basketball. He's got a good feel for those guys. If you put Malika Andrews in there, it, it, it'll be like uh, that lady on uh, Speak for Yourself or whatever uh, that Skip and Shannon show is, where she just sits there and announces topics. No isn't one that wants what, that. And that what Rachel does? No, she had like an open monologue. She had like actual takes. It was a good back and forth between her and the people who were on the show. So I hope that they continue the show with somebody like George Sedano. I'm pushing for George Sedano to get that job. He probably don't want it, but well, no, I think he probably does want it. You know, 
He does. And we, I actually, he was late to a radio show one day and I said, where, where, where you been, man? He goes, I had this meeting with Dave Roberts. I'm like, you're meeting with the manager of the, of the Dodgers. He's like, no, this <laughs> other guy, Dave Roberts, he runs NBA for ESPN. His name was in this article that I was reading today. I look, I find all these media moves fascinating. I find all this behind the scene drama stuff fascinating. So Alex, well, that's we, a did good one. we did that's it. We did it. a good one. We that's did a good it. One, man. All right. Toriolistics. That's the highlight of the day. Hey, by the way, don't forget Toriolistics is looking. If you want a good job and you're interested in the cannabis industry, they are looking for employees. Go visit the shop. Tell them you're interested. Toriolistics. Use our promo code Grande. You'll save 20%. All right. Bert Grossman is stopping by. Oy vey. I, I, I don't mean to start a fight, but I know Browner and Bert are going to go at it because they're really angry with each other. I'll explain <laughs> coming right back. Who, Stick me? around. Great friends, we're in the Seven Mile Casino Studios. It's Kaplan and crew with Grande and the Brown Man. It is a Thursday afternoon, and it's time to visit with Bert Grossman. You hear Bert as part of Browner and Bert on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday nights here on 1090 from 6 to 7 p.m. Here is former Charger first-round draft choice Bert Grossman in the house. What's up, Bert? Nothing. How's it going, Scott? You know what I think? I'm wearing my... I'm Pirates Hag, you know. I'm done with the Padres right now. You know. You're going to be the first to know. I'm done. Bandwagon. No, I'm not bandwagon. You got to be good to be on a bandwagon. Mm. See that, Browner? He jumped. Why don't you yell at him? I don't expect anything out he of him. He officially jumped oh, ship. Oh, oh, wow. Not only, not only did he jump ship, now he's wearing the hat of the guy that swindled you for Adam Frazier. First of all, anybody <laughs> swindled me for no Adam Frazier. I told y'all, don't, don't, don't be drinking that Kool Aid. Mm, Look, you got a hit. Last I, night. I'm not jumping bandwagon. Do yourself a favor. Get on Google mm -hmm. and Google when um, they hired Tingler. I think it was like Halloween, fittingly, in 2019. <laughs> okay. And read the article and read the article and then look at what's going on now and tell me why he's not getting fired and Preller's not getting fired. We what, just what had you, this conversation. Should, yeah, jump into this conversation. I don't listen I, to y'all. No, it's okay. Well, how could um, you have heard our conversation? Yeah, Bert. So, so wait. So, Bert, you you think you think? I'm just curious. What article did you read? Yeah, you which say article? Article as if there's only like one. Wikipedia. But, yeah. What are you saying? No, no. I read the Union Tribune article back when they when they hired him because I was yeah, wondering and, like, what year yeah, was that again? 2019. Okay. You you don't know anything, man. I brought up yesterday. Did you hear our show yesterday? October 24th. The, the October 24th, 2019. Okay. Okay. Read uh, What's the article about? What's the article about, Bert? expectations um you know they were so loaded at that point because you know paddock was an ace in the making yep um that they had to win right away and if by 2022 they weren't winning and he was going to fire everybody i mean this fowler saying this and it was an embarrassment you know aj green's last uh, month there it was an embarrassment i mean everything that's going on now but with another AJ green's a terrible manager half okay so padres what now Padres management had placed an emphasis on experience as they began their process. Players also seemed eager to play for a manager who had won elsewhere. Hmm. But Preller downplayed experience as any sort of overriding factor, and several people in the organization indicated other traits would play a role in the decision, like controllability. That's not in the article. I just added that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you should have kept uh, going with it. I believed you. The Padres did talk to Bruce Bochy after the season. Oh. Uh, but... Uh, but the man who won three World Series with the Giants is committed to taking time off. Mm -hmm. Mm. The team Not also did money. extensive research on fired Cubs manager Joe Madden, but Not it became clear he was wanted to go to Anaheim. Ron Washington does cocaine, so we're not going to hire him. I agree. Uh, and, and falls asleep that's, in the dugout. That's in the article, by the way. I'm just kidding. Wow. Uh, the decision came after several discussions about how their hiring would be received by players, fans, and media, as well as multiple back and forth sessions arguing which manager was a better fit. I think um, Dusty Baker was available at that time too. That's the, not the article I read. The one I read was when they actually announced him as, as oh the new, um, well, you said when they up. hired him. The plan is to surround Tingler with experienced coaches like Fire Rothschild, <laughs> including the hope that they will some be current members of the staff and possibly. Some with managerial experience. They also list Mark Loretta in here. That obviously didn't happen. Mm. Uh, okay, let me go look for while you guys talk. With the one All right, so talking. Bert, let me ask you a question. Do you think Chase Tingler should be fired? Oh, absolutely. I think Preller should be fired too. Okay, and and just back up the why Preller should be fired part of it. Uh, part of it is he hired Tingler. Um, <laughs> look, you can't – You we're so used to the Padres being, you know, not putting any money in and not having these elite players and – 
and, and that's fine to, to look that way. But I mean, look at their look at their roster now. You can't. They're going to finish. I mean, what are they lost like ten of eleven or thirteen of sixteen? And they still have the Giants going forward. They're going to get swept again tonight in this series with the wow. Dodgers. I mean, you go and finish last in the NL West. That's just not acceptable at this point. Everything they put into it. And again, if you find the article I'm talking about, they <laughs> outline trying. everything. It's almost yeah. It's almost like a Nostradamus wrote it. I mean, it's pretty much the exact same thing happened that they said would not happen and will not happen, or heads will roll. Yeah, I, I listen. I I was saying this before you came on. I think the biggest mistake they've made is they've given AJ Preller too much control. Like he's the smartest guy that's ever been in a baseball front office. He hires managers who are inexpensive, inexperienced, who follow his philosophy, and who he can control. And, and when I see uh, A.J. Preller yesterday get grilled by our former colleague, Marty Caswell, who says, is 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 Tingler definitely going to be the manager next year? And Preller's like, yeah, because we believe in him. Um, we have a lot of faith in him. We think he's a talented young manager. Let me tell you something. That was before the game yesterday. I wonder if somebody gets to A.J. Preller today <laughs> and they say, hey, that talented manager who got completely outmanaged last night and then who had nothing to say after the game because he knew that he didn't have answers for the media. Is he really that talented of a manager or could you actually find somebody who's a more talented manager? And by the way, somebody who actually has a track record of success and somebody who, when they walk into the clubhouse, people go, wow. Okay. You know what? I, I know who that guy is and I, I know what he's done. Here's what Preller said. Quote, somebody, uh, Tingler is somebody who can connect with players. Somebody players, somebody whose players are going to want to run through a wall for somebody that they're going to want to play for. They're going to be proud to play for. We talked about somebody who has knowledge and con content, content, content. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Obviously mm -hmm. a lot goes into game of baseball. It's a detail game. It's a highly skilled game. Somebody who can transfer that knowledge and experience to our talented group that we have right now at the big league level. Somebody who has passion and work ethic and energy through day-to-day -day experiences can transfer that to the group that we have right now. That's not who they hired. Yeah. No. And I, I'm looking at the article right now. I found it. Uh, his quote oh. when he's hired, I hope to learn quick because I don't have experience. That didn't happen. Um, wow. Where else? I'm trying who to sent you that link? Can you imagine you getting a job as a manager? <laughs> ne I mean, it's just, what is this research you I did, wrote it. Bert? I know. All right. Hold on one second. Burke Grossman is here, and we are in the Seven Mile Casino Studios. And I actually want to talk a lot today to Bert about some other things other than baseball, because we've been talking about the Padres and the Dodgers all day. Before Wait, can I, I get just there, say this one? Can I just do this one? Because this is the this is the quote from Fowler I was talking about. He said Thursday, I watched the team on the field. You saw the team on the field. We were an embarrassment the last three or four weeks of the season, and we're not going to do that. If we don't perform better in 2020 and 2021, we will make changes. That's absolutely it. AJ knows that and is comfortable with that, and I think so is Tig. We have to win, and we have to win now. That's the expectations. So – that was two, three years ago. I mean, what? How, how more embarrassing can you get? And you've well, added all these players. Well, you know what's amazing about that is that is I is can that, read. How, how, well, that's pretty impressive. <laughs> but you know what's amazing is that people will knock the Dodgers from last year. Ooh, put an asterisk next to their championship because it was a sixty-game season. Yep. Nobody's saying that about the Padres. How the Padres got through sixty games last year and made it to the postseason, and in the full, real, extended hundred and sixty-two, they are falling apart again at the end of the season, the way they did, Bert, to your point, back in 2000, what was it, 18 or 19? I think it was uh -huh. 19. 19. Yeah. I just said that yeah. the last segment. No, 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 no. I, 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 I literally just said you can't give them credit for a 60-game season. Yeah. Oh, well. I thought in the last segment you guys were doing a, a, an interview with uh, two guys that make masks. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, 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 no. oh, oh my god. Here we go. Oh my god. All right, Listen. I'm calling a timeout. I'm calling a timeout. <laughs> And then I'm going to get into this. Here goes. Um, first things first. Make masks. What the hell let me tell. Well, I'm going to tell you what happened here, Alex. <laughs> so, so let me just give a shout out to uh, one of our great sponsors, HES Solar, HESSolar.com, and Spencer Holt. It's real easy to get a hold of Spencer. Just email him, Spencer at HESSolar.com. I have been telling you for months now about YMCA's and boys and girls clubs and shopping centers and corporate offices, places where uh, people are saying to themselves, "How can we save money?" How do we find a way to save money? Well, if you install a solar system with HES Solar at your business, you're going to save a lot of money from your SDG and E bill. So email Spencer Holt, Spencer at HESSolar.com. I've told you about the Brigantine family of restaurants, corporate headquarters, Miramar, 
brewery over here, test kitchen over here, lots of executive offices, saving $36,000 a year off their sdg and &E bills. If you are a CEO, if you are a CFO, if you are a COO, if you're a business owner, if you are anybody looking to save money with your business, solar energy could be the answer. Stop paying these ridiculous sdg and &E bills. Email Spencer Holt, spencer at hessolar.com. All right, Alex, you don't know this, but there, I don't know how much longer the Brown or Burt show is going to be able to. Me oh, neither. gosh, what I the hell neither. now? Me dude. neither. That's, that makes two of us. Listen to the listen to yesterday's show. First segment. What the was hell did you guys brilliant. do now? The second segment. He well, brought in. He brought in. Did uh, Bert quit? Well, Bert, can I you, hope can he you, do. Bert, can you, you? We couldn't hear you. Everybody's talking over each other. The first segment of yesterday's Browner and Bert show was what? That was brilliant. That was all me. No, you but what was it? Um, this we we're talking about agents and the mafia and things my co-host didn't know about because he doesn't prepare. Kind of like the Christy Martin interview where he didn't prepare. <laughs> I, I gave him one assignment. Watch the Netflix documentary. I don't work for you. You you don't give oh, me assignments. Wow. Like what are you oh, talking? What are you scary. talking about? Oh, I'm gonna give you I assignment. For no you. more you're mass designers on the me, show. You're not going to give me anything. You don't oh, read oh. anything before any of our shows start. You're not gonna give me anything. Are you high right now? Again, are you, like I said, you're to Scott, tripping. Like I said, what? Scott, I'll say the same oh, thing. To you. I'm a hacker. I don't Get need to read any here. Signs. What? I don't need, what I don't need to read. What? Get what is going here. on here? What okay, the, well, here, let's. What is okay, the tension? What the I'm hell, out, dude? Out. Let me let me tell you what happened. So Bert sends watch me a text. Show. Bert sends me a text, and he says, "Did you see our guests on the show?" And I said, "No." I said, "Because you know, I knew they had Christy Martin on. I knew Bert was excited about it, and mm -hmm. I knew Browner. We had talked about this on the air. Browner did not watch the documentary, <laughs> and said, "I and said I don't need to watch the documentary." He lived it. He, right. right. And, he, and and that's why when Browner said to her, hey, I, I see you've taken on a new fight in your life. Um, you're really standing up for the LBGTQ community. She was like, no, actually, I'm not. I'm, I'm involved in the domestic that's violence. Not world. I, that's not what yes, I said, but did. okay. Yes, you did. You, you messed it all up. I, was, I had to apologize to her afterwards. I was embarrassed. And I told her that your mom had stabbed her boyfriend. And that's why you had a thing in there. And her Shut husband up, dude. My mom her. didn't. My mother didn't stab anybody. Guy bro. Slipped, he dude. fell. Stop he fell. It. Guy stop guy it. Slipped. Stop it's it. It's funny because Christy stop Martin said her husband tried to say the same thing. She slipped and fell on the knife. That's exactly what he said in court. That is not what she said. That's, that's legally that's binding. All right, now here's what happened. Let me tell you wow. what I understand to have happened. And Browner, you should you should absolutely defend yourself here. My understanding is that Browner brought on a couple of guests mm -hmm. who either work for or own. A own. mask. They own a mask company. The Henry Mask Company. Yes. Okay. And the Henry, Henry mask. mask Company does what, Browner? They supply masks to the NBA. They apply. They supplied masks for the Obama birthday party. Uh, War. Oprah Winfrey. Like they supply masks to like the most famous people wearing masks. Okay. So now I, I want you to know that I've been getting hit up by the guy uh, to try and put guests on the show from mm -hmm. this mask company, and I'm like, uh, no. No, doesn't sound interesting to me. Sorry. I mean, I know you want free promotion on the air. No, mm -hmm. the answer is no. But I guess they got to you, Browner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they said the hey, story, Browner. it interests it interests me at two young black men who love fashion. One who's been doing fashion for 10 years is dressing NBA players. I like to talk about fashion. So I thought that it would work for me to have them on. It doesn't work for this show to have them on. Of course not. By the way, the guy who was hitting me up was white, just so you know. Yeah. So, um, well, listen, black people finally got white folks working for them. What is wrong with that? <laughs> <laughs> what is wrong with that? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we finally got yeah. some white folks pushing paper for us. My bad. No, I guess what, the, what I'm saying is, is that you know, the story that you said you were interested in is that you know. Here are these two young black guys and they've got mm -hmm. this mask company and they're supplying masks to NBA players, Oprah Winfrey, Obama, like they're deeply involved in the African-American community and supplying these masks. For me, I was like, listen, guys, everybody wants free promotion and and that's not exactly what we do. So Bert said to me yesterday mm -hmm. that he had a problem with the guests that you booked. In fact, why does everybody so go crying to you? Yeah, that's boss, right. He's got my boss. phone number. It says Kaplan and crew. Don't say Burt and crew. Alex and crew. Don't but say it's Browner the and crew. Browner and Burt show. It's not the Kaplan well, that's show. That's what I said. I said, so, hey, I said you so own the airtime. I said, so Burt, I said, Burt, why don't you and Browner have a conversation about what you think this show should be? Because in my opinion. I quit. It, it doesn't matter anymore. The Brown, second I, mean, I turn my Zoom on and I see Prince and Brown. Apollonia, 
I was done. Bye. Okay. Okay. Who you gonna have Bye. on next? Who you gonna have on next? Not you. Oh, okay. who? How about that? Don't you worry. The guy that makes uh, chains and wristbands for Walmart. Who you gonna have on next? Bye. All Bye. Right. This is, this is like actual anger, Scott. I don't feel well, comfortable. Right, I don't feel comfortable having this conversation. Because Bert said that Browner was like holding up NBA jerseys or something on the screen, and Bert had a big problem with that. Bert was like, "Listen, it's we're about it's about to be football season." I got a ton of football stories. I got a ton of football related guests. Yum. And Browner's talking about like NBA jerseys and masks. And and Bert had a problem with the, the show that Browner decided to produce. So we're talking about it. So we're going to talk about a female boxer in, in football preseason. Okay, cool. Good times. Oh, now he's talking Good my times. guests. Good times. Talking my guests. <laughs> Good times. You had Prince and Apollonia on, and I had Christy Martin. And you were I had two. Guess. I had two relevant fashion designers on the show. Global, global fashion designers. Great. Oh, Good times. Stop. Good times. Yeah, I, Good I times. thought it was sports radio. I didn't know it was fashion radio. It's radio. My bad. It's entertainment. No, no. We need because you were just because you didn't like it doesn't mean everybody didn't like it. We need a mediator. We don't need no damn mediator. We you need to stop mediator. whining to Scott. You got my phone uh, number. Why wow. you whining to him? You don't answer. That's why you don't answer. <laughs> and Scott's the boss. That's what white people do. They go behind your back and they and they go up the ladder. Clearly, like you did him. Pretty much so. Same thing. KOSI oh, has. Okay. Oh, I'm fine. I don't, I'm fine. I don't care. I can oh, care you know less. You could be, be crying in the shit after this show. Don't. No, worry. brother. You you don't you don't know me well enough to know that. Nice try. Mm -mm, damn, no. Damn. I so keep it moving. Was, so what was Bert talking about though about he, Bert's big gripe browner was mm -hmm. that you were you were showing like NBA jerseys on the screen. I have Bert's no like, idea Bert's what like, he's no, talking about. No, 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 he wasn't doing that. He was showing no like no idea certain, what he's talking about. Certain NBA players and what they were wearing on the screen and and having those to um, you know, critique their 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 fashion. But if I'm driving down the highway and I'm stuck on a thing, I can't I can't see what what jacked up outfit they got on and I don't care who's critiquing it. It's not sports radio. That's why you're not allowed to. That's why you're not allowed to do any of the um, booking anymore. That's an order. <laughs> and so, and so that's we're going to okay. Order. So the the person you oh, sent me, man. the 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 <laughs> guest on Monday that you sent me, mm -hmm. what are they doing? Quinn Early played for the Chargers. Um, just released a documentary on Netflix about the history of Iowa football. Huh? Because well, that's well, what well, people well. in Southern California want to talk about. Iowa football. Come on, bro. Stop. Well, he played for the Chargers too. Stop. And, and you did too. Sports. You got a documentary coming out too. I might. I might. How I yeah, quit okay. this show. I ain't gonna watch that either. It's gonna be a whole half hour on that. We, how I quit why, this show. Why oh, we bring? No. Why it's we bring about your one win for the here. Strike Force? I know it's too much negative energy. Who? I need negative energy. You guys are making. I call it like it is. He out here whining like a five year old. Text me. You know. You know what this sounds like? This sounds exactly like Carson Wentz is a top five quarterback. This is what this. Put this on the hot takes hotline. See you. See you during the season. Oh wow. See you during the season. My dog back. Are you uncomfortable or just me? No, I'm not uncomfortable at all. I actually love this. Crazy uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah, I like this. I like conflict because Brown is real right now. Runner's mad. I'm always oh, real. What you mean? Yeah. No, but you're mad, man. No, I'm not mad, man. I no, know yeah, you're mad, I, man. I, I, no, no, no. I know what Bird is. That, that you're mad, mad because you shook the table. You pounded the table. No, he because I. How is this any normal than anything I do on a daily basis around here? I know uh, how you can make this right, Browner. Moving forward. Don't care. Keep you it to me, yourself. You can't. You can't email it. Email it. Email it to Bert at work. All right. I'm gonna send. No, that's not my email. That's my old email. That's why. Either way. Scott, I'm gonna have to quit now again. Bye. Unless, Good unless we bye. switch the graphic up to Burt and Brown. Goodbye. Goodbye. You ain't even, it should even be Burt and Browner. I never heard Bert of Burt and his assistant. Talk about quitting the show. every week. Oh, I'm quitting. Oh, I'm quitting. Bye, man. Don't let the donut hit you with a Lloyd show split you. Go on now. You know Go on now. Right now. Let me ask you a question. New show alert. Go Bert with the win. And his assistant. Go with the win. <laughs> <laughs> so let me ask you a question. So Browner. Huh? On paper, yes. I'm gonna show you two things on paper. One is you got two minutes. Okay, one is two guys from a mask company, mm -hmm. fashion masks, and one guy is a former Charger player who's now involved in producing documentaries. That nobody in San Diego wants to talk about the Chargers, and no one in San Diego wants to talk about Iowa football. But continue. Those two guys are from San Diego, now live in Los Angeles. Continue. Oh, wait, wait, hold on. I got, I got a point because I'm listening to Jim Rome. 
Scott is Christ. talking. Your boss he, is talking. You, I'm, I'm your boss. Wait, your I'm boss listening to Jim Rome. He has he has Christy Martin on his show today. Jim Rome has a zero point zero one rating in San Diego. But continue. That's that's for other reasons. He's got Christy Martin on his national mm -hmm. show. He don't have two dudes that make masks. Cool. Just I saying. wonder how that. I wonder how she did on that show. Pretty good. Cool. I'm sure he watched a documentary because he's a professional. Well, <laughs> I gotta say, I gotta say this as the, as a producer of this show, this yeah. segment sucks. No, way. Thank nobody you. wants to hear this. No, way. thank this you. Is this is off. I just another Scott, terrible segment by Bert. I just text Scott. This segment. sucks. Oh man, I disagree. I do too, Scott. There's two no people way. bitching at each other like little babies. Just talk off there. Maybe it should be me and you, and then it should be Alex. Like and normally, it's entertaining. Today, I gotta say, this sucks. This mm -hmm. is boring. That's just my yeah, opinion. Maybe people like, put it on sided. Was this good? I don't think so. <laughs> it'll it'll be filled up in the YouTube chat with people trying to decide. Uh, yeah. Uh, anyway, right, well, but... well, Bert's quitting again. And, Glad this uh, is over. And now Browner's yeah. moving on to a new partner. So who's, is. who's it going to be, Browner? Browner and who? Skinny. Uh, I'll go back to Darren Carrington, person who I shouldn't wow. have left to begin with. Uh oh, oh, you left him. He told me he mm -hmm. left you. No, I never told you that. No, who's Darren he told Carrington? Me he left you. Uh, he played for oh, shocker, play for the Chargers. I thought Wait, nobody, nobody cared about the Chargers. Uh, nobody wants to hear about that. that. Nobody, nobody wants to hear about that. <laughs> Apparently, Darren Carrington's gonna want to have Quinn early on. Yeah, who's he? he? Will <laughs> and then you will get in a fight with, with, with Darren. Who's he? Mm -hmm. Who's Quinn Quinn's Early? Quinn's been on our show like five Quinn times. Early. Yeah, Quinn, Quinn Early's been on this show many times, and you never in know person. who anybody is. So. Are we gonna talk about this? Are we gonna talk about his documentary on this show? Actually, well, actually, yeah, he, I actually booked he, him for next week, too. Yeah, he hit me go. up. He was, <laughs> he was like, yeah, he's like, can I get some airtime? I was like, anytime, brother. I love you, man. All right, cool. Free advertising for Quinn Early. No, he's not He's not advertising a profitable business of masks. A, a, film is, a film can make profit? Well, he's actually just advertising a documentary. You know, I said to the guy who, who tried to book those guys on the, uh, the mask guys, I'm like, what, what, what am I, a charity here? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think three days of Burn Browner was a mistake. We should go back. To I, know, I think, I think you get, might be right too. It's too, too much. Two, two it's too much. It's too much. There'll be, no, now because, there'll be no more days. Would it there's, change your mind, Browner, if I told you Quinn Earl is black? Nope. All right. I thought well, well was, this I segment's thought, already over time, so let's, oh, that's let's break it. All right. Bert, it is great to be with you always. Was we it, though? Look, I think so. I loved it. I did. Okay. Too. I like conflict. We're in the Seven Mile Casino Studios. All right. There's Bert and Browner, or Browner and Bert, rather. Excuse me. Or, or Burton's wow. assistant, as he calls him. <laughs> oh That's God. the new show. You can man. ask Browner. Burton is assistant. He's scared of you. Come on, man. He won't even box you in the ring. I'm you scared of who? Browner. I ain't scared of no. All right. Bye. All right, Alex. Bye. We're coming right back. Enough of you all. Quit. All right, great friends. Wrapping things up here on a Thursday. What a crazy day today. You and Burton are not going to. You and Burton are not going to survive. By the way. No. No, we're not. That's probably a, that's probably better for me. It's time to actually. It's time to do a real show. I don't you know, know what, what he's doing. You know what it is, man. It's like it's like grumpy old men. I really thought this is what you Kurt thought grumpy Hank old men would be. We're gonna, no, no. I thought Kurt and Hank were going to be great. I thought you guys were going to be great. A lot of people say that they love you two guys together. Um, just there's just no structure to the show. And now I can imagine where Bert wants to talk football because it's football season and Bert wants to tell all of his old crazy stories and Browner wants to talk about basketball and hip hop and fashion and all these other stuff that Browner is interested in. And I just suspect that neither of you guys talk before you go on the air. And so then I, this is the result. I have I've, I send him information before every show, every show, I send him articles. I send him topics. You guys he need a middleman. He doesn't re he doesn't read it. You guys need he a producer. Read it. He doesn't read it. And I love how he prepared for one thing, for one thing the entire time we've been doing the show. And now he's Mr. Preparation. So that made me that that made me uncomfortable. It didn't, didn't make like me it. uncomfortable. I like no, it. It's, I didn't like it's, it. it's fine. He'll be there on Monday. I'll no, be there. No, it's Monday. fine. We'll talk about football. Alex, I love how uneasy. non confrontational you are, and I love how even keel you are. I wish I was more like you. Well, it's not that I I actually enjoy the drama like <laughs> a lot. I just it just made me uncomfortable. That's all. Yeah, yeah calling, calling your two guests, what did he call them? Uh, fools? Prince and Apollonia. Oh, no, yeah. Fools was fine. You called the Padre players fools. That was fine. Yeah. Prince hey, and man, Apollonia. Listen, sorry I tried to put something nice and entertaining on the show from a fashion standpoint. You it's guys need good. to stop sending each other stuff, and you guys actually need to talk about stuff. Listen, that guy's <laughs> got my phone number. Oh, he texted oh me about, my God. I just said, he, 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 he oh, me. I don't work God. for you. You don't I tell don't me what to do. You tell me. 
I know, don't. But, I know, but but dude, you 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 know who he is. You know what he is. He's a character. You know, he's a he he's a great storyteller of old BS nonsense stories. You know, uh, he's got some relationships with some old football players that that's who he is. So when okay, you say you don't work for him, it's it's like I know you don't work for him, but if you want to get the most out of him, you got to work you with guys got to be on the same page. He's not going to work with you. He's not going to work with you. So you might as well get used to that. (laughs) And you know, he has no interest in fashion. The guy wears Chuck Taylor high tops and Pittsburgh pirate ball caps and cargo shorts. Army shorts. Right. So, you know, he doesn't care about fashion. You know, he doesn't care about masks. You know, he doesn't care about like business, you know? So, so if you, it's almost like you're going to do your show and he's going to do his show. If you listen to the stories he tells, they're, actually two minutes long because when you ask him to actually uh elaborate on it because he's got some really good story like the story he told in the first half of the podcast about the mob being tied into uh craig ironhead craig ironhead hayward's contract as a rookie like that was a good story it was but he couldn't elaborate on the story and so there's nowhere else to go with the story like it's a it's it's massaging between two people trying to figure out how, what we want to do with the show. So it takes time. That's Is there all. a new show? Yeah, it takes time. It'll be fine. You guys think that third day was a good thing or a bad thing? Terrible. No, I think it's good. I think it's good. I think it's going to help. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, it's gonna help. this is the first week and they're already like, fuck you. Not fuck you, basically. <laughs> <laughs> this is the true. first week. This is the first <laughs> week and they're like, fuck you. Not fuck you. We're going to be like you. those two guys. We're going to be like those two guys. You fucking work for you. From, uh, I don't fucking work for you. You fucking like, Just do the assistant. fucking show. Stop <laughs> being a bitch. Stop being a bitch. Just do the fucking show. Exactly. Just do the fucking show. We're going to be those guys. All right. We got to go. We got work to do. Peace out out everybody.